Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and in between ears, I am your hostess with the mostest, Alexander Rodriguez, here for On the Rocks Radio Show, where celebrities and cocktails mix. It's all queens here tonight, chatting about the Tonys, Pride, soap operas, with uh, our Broadway baby uh, from Chicago, Revival of Pippin, beautiful, performing on the Tonys, and from ABC's American Housewife, Carly Hughes, who's en route, actually, fingers crossed. And tonight, we have the fiery Latina actress, ay, ay, ay! Eva Tamargo from NBC's Passions for 10 years, girl. And Tyler Perry's The Haves and Have Nots with our all star panel, Drag Diva, e EKA, <laughs> AKA, the baddest bitch, Rhea Latre for our Pride Review, People Magazine's Patrick Gomez for our Broadway show review, and our resident pop culture hottie, Stephen Daler. Also, just happen to be sitting in, we have Wesley Wood, back by popular demand. Let the drinks begin. <laughs> And most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On the Rocks with Alexander, coming at you from Sunset Gower Studios in the heart of Hollywood, where I drink with your favorite celebrities and we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and and that's about it. So pop a cork, pour a glass, lean back, and enjoy On the Rocks every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. There we go with the applause, yes. Big crowd today, big crowd. Uh, actually, we have crowd members from Australia, so, you know, word. Do people still say word anymore? <laughs> no, you, did. Like, you did. Okay, so. well, and now we have the, 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 like, the baddest bitch. Are we allowed to say word, ochre, and heller? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Officially, no. 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 That's just you, though. Just you specifically. You know, I'm always behind the times, though. Like, I'm ready to wear my romper tomorrow. <laughs> oh, God. The lashes are on tight tonight. We have the sexiest cast to date here tonight. Eva, you're used to working with all these soap opera hotties and yeah. reviewing, you know, your men that you've been with the show. I'm like, John Schneider from the Dukes of Hazard mm, to all these yeah. Latin hotties. So I had to bring all these hotties here for you. Uh, tonight. Um, and Carly, uh, like I said, Carly is filming today with HBO, so uh, hopefully she will make it today. Uh, but the studs are here. You guys, John C Cusack is doing uh, voiceovers for Supercuts. When have you ever looked at John Cusack and been like, mm, that's a good haircut? <laughs> like, what's he doing with his career? People Magazine, what's he's he doing with his super career? Cast. But is he actually in the commercial or is it just the voiceover? It's the voiceover, but you know it's John, because he always sounds like, you know, he's like half asleep. You know what I mean? What, what's he doing with his career, People Magazine? I mean, I didn't know he was doing that, so clearly you need to take over my job. But no, I, I love those voice, like trying to figure out who they are. Like, like Julia Roberts does a lot. Susan Sarandon does the ty the, the Tylenol ones. Yes, Julia Margulies does Chase. Mm -hmm. Sigourney Weaver and Finding Dory. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to find a paycheck. Um, uh, but I can't even get a gig for like Dunkin' Donuts. I'm like, come on, super cuts. He is nowhere near that. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Hotel Fusion and its restaurant Taste on Ellis in San Francisco. Uh, go like them on social media. Um, I'll be broadcasting there from San Francisco very shortly. Um, it's a great place. They pay for me to come. Wine and dine there at the club that they have there. All the booze you could drink. And I'm still invited back. Who knew? <laughs> Um, hello to our listeners around the nation on iHeartRadio, Universal Broadcasting Network, Player FM, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, Satchel, iTunes, and of course, we are streaming Facebook Live right now on Hillcrest Social in San Diego, on True FM in Ohio, and nationally on Reverie Network. Download the Reverie app. My mom, Mama Rose, is in the chat room, and she's obsessed with today's group of characters, by the way. She's like, whew, it's a hot time. Yes, it is. <laughs> Hi, Mama Rose. Don't drink too much. Answer our, our guest. Uh, if you have questions, go to ubnradio.com, to the chat room, or on Facebook. She'll be typing your responses. Tony! Hello. Kurt, you guys, Kurt, our engineer, our usual engineer, not that you know, we don't enjoy your <laughs> we presence. All, we all miss Kurt. We all miss Kurt. Uh, Kurt is still interning, but he will return hopefully soon. Uh, Tony, <laughs> do you have any advice for the day? Well, I, I do, but since I don't drink, I, my, my dad always gave me this advice, and I want to ask you this. Okay. Don't talk like When a girl. you're drinking to forget, he says pay in advance. What does that mean? When you're drinking it, pay when in When you're drinking to forget, pay in advance. What does that mean? Because you forget to pay your bill. I, maybe that's what. Yeah. It is. Hello, West Hollywood. <laughs> at, my at my fiance's birthday, I tried to pay the bill twice. I was like, "No, I haven't paid yet," and they were like, "Yeah, you did." And I was like, 
No, I didn't. I and mean, then is this why we don't hang out like afterwards? You know, because you know, who who actually pays for their own bill anymore? <laughs> no, but it's funny. Like after a night in West Hollywood, and and you know this, I always the next day you go out or the next time you go out, I always walk into the bar and I'm like, look at the bartender, see how they greet me. Like, did I do good last time? Was I a good witch or a bad witch? I, I always get the ooh girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how do you feel? <laughs> but they expect that from you, you know. Uh, well, um, yeah, why? Like, like, you know, <laughs> like if you don't act up, then they're they're disappointed, right? I mean, yeah, I constantly have to drink when I'm at work. There's there's no me time. too, girl. Yeah, there's just no way. <laughs> me too. Love your job. Love the yeah. way you think. I like to do it for an hour and a half, by the way, and I don't have to, you know, dress up. Well, I mean, I dress up a little bit still. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony. Thanks for that uh, world uh, changing advice. Uh, <laughs> OC Pride, I'm coming for you June 24th. I'm performing at the Pride Speaks run. page at the Frida Cinema. Run to, not run away, girl. <laughs> at the Frida Cinema, I will be performing with the shirtless violinist who's visiting from Seattle. He is the YouTube viral guy doing all these videos. We put a little show together. He's doing songs. I'm doing songs. So, uh, And we're putting a little show together to tour around the nation. So come catch us in OC. We'll be live streaming as well. Uh, out at the fair this last weekend, while you guys were in L.A. whooping it up, um, I was at the San Diego County Fair with all the straights. Um, I have to thank Out at the Fair and San Diego County Fair. It was so fun. I was I emceed for eight hours straight at the Coors stage. I mean, when we had acts, I was backstage. Um, but uh, my co-host was Alanda Plenty, who's the queen down there. And, you know, usually, and you know, like if somebody says, hey, you're co-hosting with this person, you're probably like, mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Am, am I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or are they? Right. <laughs> yes. She was so nice. We had such a great time. And she did the diva drop, which is the bungee drop, in full and kept her wig, everything. And it was so fun. Um, And you're not supposed to drink at all. Uh, The performers are not, or the volunteers. Um, But my gift when I got to my uh, dressing room tent area were bottles and bottles. Thank you so much. (laughs) Uh, They know their audience. Yes, they do. (laughs) They knew how to keep me there. Eight hours, though. That's a telethon. (laughs) How is your. You're telling my liver. How do you sell the voice after that? Um. I, I don't know. I just, you know, it was fun because we had to interact with the crowd and it was a lot of straight families not knowing that it was out at the fair. Vicky Vox was on the other stage performing at That's the same time. That's my favorite thing at, at, at uh, Disneyland Gay Days. They're like, is, what? Is, is also like, like the straight guys that show up wearing a red, because you're supposed to wear a red shirt mm-hmm. and you oh, yeah. always see and they like, you see them like slowly realize like, oh, wait, no. why is there so much, oh, Oh, <laughs> that's how I mean, Disney well, how does many it. People, do you just go up to you like that with the red shirt? They're like, oh, you're usually like really scared and intimidated anyway. Like, oh my God, he's so fine, but he's wearing red. Should I go talk to him? Like, how many people actually go up to the straight guy and is like, you're wearing no, a red shirt? No, it's a thing. I had a friend who, who's, Saw number three. I had a friend whose dad went and like <laughs> put a sweat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will say, um, I, I accidentally, my family ended up at Gay Days uh, at the Six Flags in San Antonio one time, and I was like... Six Flags is rough. 15 or 16, 15 or 16. It's like West Side Story. Did not... <laughs> San did Antonio. Not know, did not, yeah. With the gangs. Mm, did not we understand. Were we were like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, wait a second, and I had the best day of my life there. <laughs> at 15, 16. Oh, mm. surprised you were to walk in 17. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, but we had a great time uh, uh, backstage with Pepper Mache performed Ricky uh, Rebel and Kitty Brocknell. Uh, we had such a fun time. So uh, we also did live streams. So go to On The Rocks Radio Show page. Uh, look up our live streams. We were able to record some of it. My mom stopped by. <laughs> she left soon. Mama. <laughs> oh, Mama. Uh, but we just had a really, really good time. So thank you to the staff. Uh, the county fair staff was great. And we got like straight guys up and doing like a lip sync for your lives. And we were dancing and we were giving away prizes. My favorite thing is what happened on SNL. What was that, last week or the uh, week before? A couple weeks ago, yeah. When they did the Erica Jane lip sync to oh, yeah, yeah, Chris, yeah, Chris yeah. Pine. Yeah. Right? It was, Chris Pine. was yeah. epic seeing those straight guys lip sync for their life. You know I, do I, mean? love, epic. I do love, though, how, how Chris Pine like, <laughs> sang like 30 seconds in one movie, and every single skit he was in, he was singing on a yeah. SNL. I know. It's like, he we did get great. It, you sing. Yeah. He's trying to audition for Into the Woods, too. Mm. <laughs> oh. No, but in, in, in that SNL skit, remember he did a little dance in his little... Oh, he was, oh, he, was all in, he was all about it. My mom has the biggest crush on Chris Pine, which makes Same. me not have a crush on somebody, because it's like, creepy... Thanks, Mom, for being creepy. Um, uh, I want to introduce my, my my co-host. Returning to the show um, is our pop culture correspondent, runway and print model and musician, Stephen Daler, with his segment, Pop on the Rocks, your daily dose of Daler, which we're going to get to. Um, 
I just have to talk about your romance novel covers. Oh, you know, yeah. I love to embarrass you every time you come. Tony, l- oh, let's no. bring them up. So oh. first we have... Okay, listen, when I put those things on my private Facebook, those mean, doesn't mean you put them on <laughs> display. I need, to, I need to put you just on my fan page. Life's a circus. On. Okay, so this one's called The Knocked Up Plan by I Lauren I, Blakely. I love, I love these uh, titles. <laughs> yes, but oh God, so butch. Um, but the, uh, the biggest thing that would sell a book is your face, and look, they cut it off. Oh, uh, well, I don't care. I get, I get paid either way. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so uh, the next book gets even... Even, even deeper. Yeah, that's the uh, one. Un- <laughs> that's the uncovering one love. That's the, I, I looked for it. I wanted. I they wanted do, on paperback. They, 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 so these they are, do. Have do. you read any of them? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> I would. How do you get into character? I, I don't even know half of what they are. Well, because it's just because. No, what if it's something lot, weird like a horse love? Well, a lot of. <laughs> Ooh, well, isn't there? Or, <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, anyway, so usually That's it's just like stock show. images. So I'll go. I'll go down for a specific book, and then I'll do stock images as well on top of that. And then later they'll be like, "Oh, you sold an image. Oh, you sold an image." So I, like it could be something that we just did. But a you, like you can't say no. I don't want to be in that book. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I can, I guess, but I just... Or Mormon's orgy. But then he sees the number. <laughs> when He's they... doing that cover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, he bought the tie and shirt already. Well, I, tra- I, trust the pho- I trust the photographer that I'm working with. So wait, what was, wait, what was the shoot like for this next one? No, no, okay. So, so, uh, that, was just, that was part of the same stock Go images. back to that one. No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it, it, it gets deeper. Uncovering oh. love. The wedding. <laughs> and in my mind, like, that's how it is. But you guys, in quotes... The forever she's always wanted and always wanted is in caps. This book <laughs> that is sounds sad. terrifying. <laughs> it sounds sad. It sounds like a horror novel. Not to confuse, you know, your, I, well, your I, audience. I never see them, so because they never, I never get tagged in any of them. So one weekend, I, I want to buy them all and just have you <laughs> autograph them and like sell them on eBay. Oh the final one is actually uh, for same sex. Uh, it's the gay novel, The Shape of You. Ooh, I that... would need a few chapters for all my shapes. I'd be like, I, I need a few shapes, okay? But did, did you pose with this man? Yes, that uh, looks like Sean Morales. Well, I was gonna say, well, I was gonna say it because it looks like you may might have just been like superimposed in there. Oh, really? Yeah, no, yeah, we yeah. actually we actually posed together. He's straight and he's like six, six foot, like six. So, oh, super so th- tall. they didn't put him on a box or anything. No, that's how tall he was. Whew. He was massive. Sign me like, up. Makes cute. me feel like yes. a woman. <laughs> Girl. You're like eight feet tall. You're like, <laughs> you're like the I big bird of, of drag queens. <laughs> <laughs> you stand next to Derek Barry and he's like, what's his pants? He's like, I, 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 I can't. There, <laughs> <laughs> I'm also returning to the show. We have People Magazine's Patrick Gomez, who appears regularly on all major entertainment media outlets, giving his report on entertainment shenanigans. Look for his regular stories in People Magazine and on People Magazine Online. You just wrote about the whole Bachelor in Paradise. That took over my whole day yesterday. Oh, a whole day? You poor thing. <laughs> well, I mean, no. So we send the magazine to the printer. People can start getting it Wednesday mornings. Um, we finish it on Monday nights, Tuesday mornings. Is it like a party in People Magazine office? It used to be. Oh. Although I will say, the one time I went to the New York office, people were passing around beers. But um, at like... 9 p.m. because we're there Monday nights like I was there until 9 last night uh, but working until about 11 and I I can't imagine the New York people get there the same time in the morning I do but East Coast time and then they're there you know till 3 in the morning finishing but but you're working for People Magazine I'm sure people no it's great I mean people have much harder jobs I'm not complaining about about that but uh, yeah no uh, The Bachelor in Paradise everything went crazy Sunday night right before I got on a plane and then I landed and there was 900 emails in my inbox Crazy, you poor thing. <clears throat> That's the thing about working in print. It's like right, right, right when deadline hits, you get all the emails. Yeah, and then everything's so frantic. It's like you couldn't have sent this to me uh, last Tuesday and given me a week to work yeah. on it. That's why it's a dying business. No, I guess. well, yeah, but we, but we, uh, <laughs> but everyone that works for the magazine works for online. Our apologies too, to People so. Magazine. Thank right. you. Right. Oh, no, I, love people. I, love, I mean, hey, you guys know what the circulation is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have none on Monday nights. Where's the beer? <laughs> um, but no, I mean, but, you know, obviously everyone works for the dot com, too. And it's 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 weird to work in that industry where there's an immediacy to 90 percent of your work. And then all of a sudden on one day a week, it's it's all devoted to mm-hmm. to something that that won't be out for another few days. It's a complete two completely different muscles that I'm glad I'm stretching both. Mm-hmm. Uh, that means something completely different on my end. Yes. Oh my, oh my lord. <laughs> Talking about uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it just got warm in here. <laughs> the nuts and bolts of the industry. Uh, Patrick Gomez is also an entertainer, having performed in musical theater everywhere, including on stage with me at Rockwell Table and Stage. He's also an avid dodgeball player in WeHo. What's the name of your team? Um, wh- the one I've played on the most is Hogwarts School of Bitchcraft and Dodgery. 
That's that's too long and intelligent for me. Well, we just call it we just call it Hogwarts. We call it Hogwarts. Um, But uh, actually, we're we're we uh, are moving to a Thursday team just for a season, and we're doing the American School, and or or we're actually calling it um, Fantastic Butts and Where to Find Them instead of. That's still too long. <laughs> You're too you long. But Harry, it's... P- Harry Potter titles <laughs> are really long. I could barely sit through the movies. I'll really be honest. <laughs> I'm right. down for one syllable team names. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Well, my favorite, every summer we do a draft league, so those are a little more timely. I love, we have like uh, Balmy Maybe I've been on. Uh, like all of them are, are extremely timely to whatever that is going on that summer. So they're like dodgeball drag names. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like what are some of the other names? Um, one of my favorites was uh, uh, Rubber Balls and Liquor. Because we play with rubber balls oh. and then we drink afterwards. Yes, but I've seen you out afterwards. Well, <laughs> you didn't pay the bill twice. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and making her debut in On the Rocks, we have diva debutante, drags baddest bitch, entertainer, singer, and promoter Ray Latre. Your lover girl is here, yes Woo! God. <laughs> I was actually really scared. Steve was like, "Oh, we should have Ray on the show." I'm like. I'm Uh-oh. scared. <laughs> I've only been scared you be. of you, Lainey Kazan, and uh, who else was I scared of? Sally Kirkland, but that's just because she's batshit crazy. Well. <laughs> yes. Uh, you got through, you, <laughs> yeah. you got through well, Tara Reid just crazy. fine. Oh, Tara Reid was a dream. <laughs> oh, I was scared of her at all. Oh, God. <laughs> we, we had to send her an Uber when the show started. And she's like, uh, Tara, oh, she's like, uh, can you send me an Uber? That's, You're um, like, yeah, She was girl. texting me, but like in my mind, that's how she sounded. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Rhea, a.k.a. Joshua Miller, has been seen in America's uh, Next <gasps> my Top Model. My government name? <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, on my it's on Wikipedia. It's on Wikipedia. Performing on stage with Pink and in music videos with Adam Lambert, Rita Ora, Kat Graham, and Demi Lovato. Ray is also part of the OG drag family in West Hollywood. The real ones. Uh, as hot out of drag as he uh, is in drag. Oh, I love you. He is only mm-hmm. ugly on the inside. And we love that about him. <laughs> Welcome. Dig deep for it, bitches. Yes. <laughs> and of course, uh, guest co-hosting on the fly, we have returning the show, Wesley Woods. Woo. Grabby Awards Performer of the Year. Uh, I am so in. excited to be sitting next to Wesley Woods right now. <laughs> the feeling is mutual, babe. Yes. <laughs> Um, and of course, and Ava, jump in all, like whenever. We're wow. going to get in depth <laughs> to your interview uh, with, after all these shenanigans, but please jump in. Um, and Wesley, you're actually performing tonight. Tonight, the Dime Bar, Fairfax, Melrose. Is that by Cantor's? Sure. Oh, all right. No, all it's, right. it's further down a little bit. That's so fun. What time is that? <laughs> now you're referencing being like, oh, is that Am by I the deli? with yeah. you to go there with you? <laughs> I mean, you have to be here. He's... He's leaving you during can, the show. Ray's gonna ask that every t- every place <laughs> she follows you, though. Yeah, I'm like, uh, am so I leaving you with get you? Out of here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Wesley is a new reoccurring uh, guest host. So you can find him here many, many times. Uh, what's your set tonight about? I don't know. You're just gonna go on the fly. Going on the fly. Did you catch that new? Uh, it's five show? minutes. I mean, if I can't talk for five minutes, oh, for five be, minutes. Yeah. There's it's a big lineup, and I think uh, Damon Wayne's Jr. is dropping by. So it should be fun. Is Damon Wayans Jr. funny? Like, I would take, I would he, not take his name. Uh, Happy Endings is one of the best shows that's ever been. Oh, really? I haven't seen it. That way. And New Girl's great too, but he, him on Happy Endings was right. fantastic. Right. I'm excited. But, but I'm sure you'll be the best part of the show. Oh, for sure. I mean, come on, a gay porn star walking into the dime bar. <laughs> You're bound to make <laughs> a dime. The jokes just write themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, here we go. Um, all right, um, Rhea, we know the least about you joining our, our co-host. You auditioned for season two of American Idol. Yes. Do you remember that audition? Because, Patrick, nope. you've covered American Idol. He was wasted. Doesn't yeah. remember a thing. <laughs> no, this is before I even, I had not even been to a gay Bar? party before. Never. Wow. What, my, what did you wear? Wait, this was season two? I won just pants and a polo shirt, and I did, polo um, shirt. I did uh, something by the Beatles, and I did Contigo La Distancia by Christina Aguilera. Shut your face. Or, or oh. Luis, sorry. Yeah. Or Luis Miguel. Uh, we have oh. a professional in here. <laughs> She's like, ah. Uh. No, really yeah. I, did, I did Christina's like version because, of course, that's how I knew about right, the song. Of course. Um, and I did well. I got to the top 60, and I just I got my taste from L.A., and I was like, there's no way I'm going to come up in here, be in front of all these cameras, just to go back to San Diego. Mm-mm. <laughs> so I stayed here. I got an internship, and... I uh, ended up in nightlife through Jeffrey Sinker's white party, and the rest is history. Well, you've really That's, made that a was, splash. And, oh, go, go ahead. Oh, that was for season two? That was season two. Yeah, I auditioned for season that? two. I, th- I feel like I may, like, met you, like, directly oh. after that. No, it would have been, because that was what, 2000, no, that was, 
Reagan, I, so you were what, twelve? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was seventeen. I was seventeen now. I was seventeen. Yeah, yeah, I was. I would have been sixteen. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God, we were totally in the same room and didn't even fucking know it. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is what the show is about: bringing people together, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Our little reunion. Um, so, right, one of the questions I got uh, was, "How did you start in drag?" Um, I fell in love with the art of drag. I thought that it was cool. I saw Raven perform for the first time. And so I sought after a drag mother. I was like, what would I look like if I did that? You know, I've always been an entertainer. I was a singer. So it was another way for me to have a platform, to have a stage. Um, I found Mayhem in Upland. Raja, the winner of season Mm -hmm. three, RuPaul's Drag Race, took me under her wing after that and um, have really nurtured me to be the best uh, drag queen that I can be. And, you know, entertainer and activist and, you know, promoter. And, you know, I just strive to be the best at at everything. So I always find the best to teach me what the fuck's going on. Mm -hmm. So smart. have to say you really have your personality people know exactly what they're going to get with you they know what your story is in terms of what your drag story is how you're going to act what to really expect from you do you feel that drag queens have kind of gotten lost in just the imagery that they don't know what their story they is? have no product they have no personality they have no like a lot of these bitches on uh tv on on rupaul's drag race they don't they don't even have a persona they don't know who they are and i think that's why they crumble and they fall apart when they're put under the pressure because if your foundation is strong and you have people and mentors there helping you along the way you become such a better queen if your drag mother is youtube get a better one yeah. you know it's it's drag is a lot more about how you look it's a it's a whole package mm-hmm. but i like what she's saying because that's true about every profession in the arts i mean i think it's great to what she's saying which is like you find somebody who's really good at what they fucking do and then you have them either yeah. you, you go eva exactly yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. and that's important you, though because, because, Cuba. because a lot of times people yeah. people get either get scared or intimidated sure. uh, one about uh going up to somebody that they feel like is better than them because they want to be the best one in the room never be the best one in the room right. always, always be learning, learning. Always and be never learning. be afraid to teach others too. I, I'm a firm believer of like if you if you're not going to learn anything and you think that you're done, like just stop, mm-hmm. just stop. Because Actually, literally, never I, do, done. I learn you're something. I learn yeah. something every day. You yeah. know, every day from a queen or a person or a friend, a roommate. I, I mean, anything. I'm fucking learning something because I'm open to learning. But when you did you learn start? Learn. Yeah. When did you start getting into it? Oh my god! Like almost ten, ten years ago. Ten years ago, yeah. Yeah. Because I was gonna say because I I was a I I kind of got to see you blossom, yeah, which was incredible. One hundred percent. You've known me for you've known who I am at least for ten years. Yeah. At least. More. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't wear wigs for years. Oh, I, had I the just receipts like, on those. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Lots of receipts. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to call in and, and, and chat with us, I know we had a caller um, that we were talking too much. Uh, Tony, what's what's the call-in number? 323-284-7826. 323-284-7826. Fabulous. Um, what are the realities of nightlife? Like, we joke that you're out every night, but you really are working every night. You're out drinking. What is the reality of your life? Do you wake up at 4 p.m. with like an eyelash stuck to your forehead and it's yeah. time to go again? <laughs> that used to be me, you know, like, I mean, even just like a couple years ago, that was me. I mean, it still was me like last week, like once or twice. But, <laughs> That's right. But, for the most but part. like, my job has really changed. It might, when I first started Nightlife, I was the drag entertainer. I was the host. Now I'm the producer. So I have my night at the Abbey every Wednesday night. And it's a bigger, way bigger role. I have to hire the uh, entertainment. I have to put the costumes together for the dancers, I hire the DJ, I make sure everyone has their shit together and the hosts look fierce, make sure their hosts are not taking too much of my bottle. <laughs> Girl, cause that definitely, there definitely was an email. So Call your friends, so honey. <laughs> I can see that email too, uh-huh. like a fake nail pops up and you're still typing uh-huh. furiously. That, for sure, I, that's when you go to the knuckles. <laughs> You're talking about brass, brass knuckles, yeah. Not yeah. Really, girl. Uh, but you've had to learn the business part of it as well, because as we know, a lot of us are familiar with the nightlife, especially Wesley. You know, you get called to perform at a lot of different um, events, and Stephen, you're you're out there as well. Uh, you can get taken advantage of, and you have to know the business aspect. You know you why? Get, because yeah. most artists are not good at business. That's why I yes. I coach young actors, and I always say the best thing you can do is learn the business. This is a business. I wish somebody had told me that because I know I made a lot of fucking mistakes, but I hadn't, I didn't know any better. But now that I'm 
a little older. <laughs> uh, Can't I'm tell. Much, I'm much. Thank yeah, you. You cannot, uh, girl. You yeah. look god. It's it's the Cuban blood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, I you said. drink it. Yes, yeah, I know. Exactly. I know how vicious Cubans are. That's how they stay young. I dated once. But it's so true. That's why she's smart because you got to really take control, and that's how you take control as an artist by learning the business and putting your hands in it and being the the producer and creator. Oh, Reyes had his hands. I, I want. I want to be the boss. You know, yeah, I want exactly. to. I want to be the one you're getting paychecks from. Right. You know what I mean? I, then I get to call the shots. And, and I have the power there. And I like to have the power, and I'm not afraid to say that. I like having the power because I really feel like I distribute it properly. Uh, and I think I'm a good leader, and I think I'm a, a great promoter. So it's a win-win for everyone, especially the venue. Shit, like I'd the, work Like the rain. Yeah, yeah. I'm right? ready to go. I'm me going. too. Like, throw me in a wig. But, like, <laughs> but even like talking about the business, like the range, you, like look at this last weekend of, with LA, LA Pride and everything, and just looking at probably all the dancers that were dancing, you know that someone was working at one venue that was getting paid different from this venue, different mm-hmm. from that venue, different from that gig. They're all the same talent. But yeah. based on the business that they're running for themselves, they're getting paid a fraction of the price of this and that and that. I had a I had a roommate who was a dancer for uh, uh, we were roommates for about a year and and yeah like it would be crazy like it's he, crazy that you can work one night at one gig and get paid fifty dollars and then work another night at another gig and get seven fifty dollars like it's just mm-hmm. that that amount is just it's nuts to me that they just they just basically value you based on what they care about and then what they value as their business. Yeah. I mean, I, no, th- but I think a lot of it too has to do with like budgets and when like you're dealing with budgets with like bigger companies and shit like that, you're obviously going to make more money. I mean, if you're dealing with a right. nightclub, a weekly event, you're you're probably not going to make more than a hundred bucks a week if you're a drag queen. But, uh, but you know what I mean? Unless you you're the boss. you get social exposure too. Like you get, you get new fans and followers. And but, yeah. I don't know. But, West but, Hollywood's but, different though. Like if you go to another city, it's different. West Hollywood though, there's such a oversaturation of it. That yeah, they, they get cheap. It's supply and demand. It's just supply and demand. But yeah, no, it was crazy. I he literally would pay his rent in like ones. <laughs> like like I would just get and he would just come. He, I would come home and it would be because he would be at opposite hours because I would work during the day and he was working during the night. I would come and it would just be money on the bed and <laughs> work bed, <this>, right? <laughs> <laughs> but like but like literally in one. So if he, he it's L A. So the rent was a lot and it, so it would I couldn't even like hold it. At least they were paying rent. I know a lot of people in West Hollywood that are not paying their rent. Yes, Tony, God. let's get him on the phone now. <laughs> You're on the air. No, can you imagine? I could literally literally pull out my phone. <laughs> um, another question we got, um, you have such a big personality. Is it is it easy to get lost behind your persona? Like, when are you just you? Um, I think that I'm the same, both. I, I really feel like when I'm not in drag, I have a little bit more swag. My brother, Marco Marco, calls me the world's first swag queen. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's cute. Right? That's, um, but like it's it. just... Um, uh, trademark! Trademark! <laughs> trademark! <laughs> That's going to be my tank, don't you dare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, TM, you need a yeah, when I'm at home yeah. and it's just, I mean, S- Stephen can vouch for me. I mean, we're roommates, so he sees me day to day. I'm pretty much the same. Obviously, when I put this on, everything is more amplified. When I'm when I'm happy, fucking Ray is fucking ecstatic. You know, when Josh is fucking crying, I want to throw myself off a fucking bridge. So it's like, it's just, it's, it's. It's just amplified. Whatever feeling Josh is, Rhea will just take it and run with it. And it's funny because you guys are roommates. You guys, how how long have you lived together? Well, I mean, technically three Dude. months, but I've known I've known Rhea for like ten years, and there was like a whole summer where you were just living on my couch, basically. Yeah, it was so cool. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so cool when I moved in because I was like, mm, I've been here so I've spent all my twenties here. Like, <laughs> nothing. I know where the bathroom is, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to show me how to work the air conditioner. <laughs> you don't have to show me how to turn on the fireplace, girl. I've done it a million yeah. times. What's funny because I know you're up early doing your fitness stuff. Um, like, how does that work? People probably figure that your apartment is like a like a like a huge orgy of fun and drinks and I mean, boys. Well, it is. And more of well, something. I mean, when, it is. When, I, when I first moved, I've in, never been invited. Uh, when I first moved, in, I had either. parties all the time. Now we know that you want an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna regret that. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Steve was like, oh, we're not going to get our deposit back. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> um, no, like, uh, actually, I think it helps, helps. I think you like it a little bit, because I don't really get up that early, maybe like nine-ish in the morning. And so I get, I go to, we go to the gym and then come back, and around that time is when you're waking up. So mm-hmm. I think, I don't know, I just, I, I mean, we never, and then when you're out late, usually I'm out late too because of work. I just always, I, I might be done at work at 2 a.m. and be asleep at 3, but I'll still wake up around like 8 or 9. Right. But oh. you're so responsible. I have never seen you, like, tipsy out. 
Like I've seen you having a good You're time. You're not around at 2 a.m., are you? Then, no, well, no, no, no. This is because no, you get tipsy black, first. Well, he's girl. blacked out by then. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he's there. He's there. He just You're doesn't there, remember. He doesn't remember. Yeah. He just gets. He just I'm, I'm paying the bill twice. <laughs> <laughs> EBT. 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 <laughs> Credit card, honey. <laughs> you, I can't get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> That's me why either, I do. Me neither. Me neither. Struggling artist over here. Me too. I'm so glad to have you join. Um. So uh, I want to talk about real transformation Tuesday. You know how how I, I embarrassed Stephen a little bit. We have your baby picture here. Oh, oh guys! My God. Uh, look, look at, at that little mom. face. Uh, you I should look, tell me she got her old drag so photo. Like my oh my God! So weird. If you literally, I look. I was like, oh my God! That's I, th- I thought it was a face swap, but no, that's yeah, no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> His mom just has a baby face. (laughs) Well, the minute I said that, I thought, well, that doesn't make sense. Thank you, Patrick, for People Magazine. That's what I'm here for. (laughs) Top-notch reporting. (laughs) Hi, Mom, if you're listening. I love you. Hey, Mom. Hi, Mom. She just had her first tornado warning in Wyoming. My mom has been Cali girl her whole life. That was crazy. Did she throw a party? I saw footage from that. No, because she ran to the basement. (laughs) As she should. As you should. She's a Cali girl. She was terrified. (laughs) And then, check this story. So then she calls her husband freaking Some out point. because she goes outside and she's like, husband, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. Uh, the hail broke my window. Blah, blah, blah. He gets home and checks on her window. She just hadn't rolled the window up. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Bora something. Cita. She just, Bora Cita. Definitely right? a girl. Uh, also, so, also is her mom. <laughs> yeah. Also, I love the fact that whether or not y- you kept the name out for privacy or not, I hope she calls him husband. Oh, no, no. no. His, name is, his name is Rick. His name is Rick. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was what we were talking about. Hello, mo- like when mother call well, each because, other mother you know, and father. I've never Creepy. really, I never had a dad growing up, so like it, it's a new thing, and I've always just called them by their name, but I actually like, I, this is like the guy that I would be like, oh my God, this is like, my dad, like he, he's a man that has treated my mom very well, and he's so good to her. That's and that, good. I'm like, it doesn't always happen that me, way. And me, treated you well too. You, I mean, he he actually is so into Rhea. He's like so enthralled to it. And like because like, you look like you can't mom. believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's been over to look creepy. No. This could be a romance novel no, written about it. Like, Steven's gonna be on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did a gig in Denver, okay, and um, <laughs> he made it a point to come to the hotel that I was put up at and Beautiful. Uh, watch me get ready and the whole thing because he wanted to see the process. And and this, he's like a OG rodeo uh, national cowboy winner. Like he wow. does not. I'm going home with you next time. You. I want to visit. That's yeah, my no, stepdad and too. He, and he's just so dope. And the fact that he totally like. Accepts and yeah. embraces yeah. me That's and my beautiful. art and, and wants not just to know accepts, about but it. is it's interested. Right. That's yeah. beautiful. That's yeah. Beautiful. Wait, we I can agree. say dope, but we can't say ochre. <laughs> yeah, I just you back. just you <laughs> can't say ochre. Oh, I yeah. I physically it, can't say ochre. Not ochre. Yeah, because he can't roll his R's. Okay. No, he can't roll his R's. Eva, help me. I can't roll my R's. Listen, like that. Oh, do that again. Uh-huh. I'm the embarrassment <laughs> of my entire family, I'll let you know. And the Mexican nation. Sorry, Mexico. <laughs> Mexico. Okay, Rhea, you are going to fall victim to our rapid fire questions. You just you just answer oh, real. See, you guys, you know, this is like, I was not ready for this, so she's, let's she's go. Good at it, though, There's nothing good. too much. We're going to ease you into this gently. <clears throat> uh, hopefully. What is the most embarrassing song on your playlist that if we knew, you'd be like, oh my God. Oh my God! Probably something dumb like "Shake It Off" by Taylor Swift. Even though I can't stand her, but like, <laughs> that's pretty much the song, dorkiest mu- music I listen to. Okay, well, all right. Yeah, that wasn't that good. Sorry. No, you are a singer. <laughs> In fact, I'll go to YouTube, uh, look up uh, uh, Rhea Latre, mm-hmm. and look up your singing videos because I was blown away. Um, you actually do your own singing. <laughs> Thank. Thank. Can you, you imagine if all um, the drag kings had to do that? What's that? Can you imagine if all the drag queens had to do their own singing? Oh, thank God they don't. Even the ones that are doing it shouldn't be doing it. Bye, Wesley. Good Bye. luck tonight. Wesley, Bye. I miss you already. Yes. And have a safe Bye. flight home tomorrow, thank by the you. way. Bye. Say hi to your mom. I will. Don't we love him? Ugh. He's the Obsessed, best. Wesley. Yes. Um, so you're a big singer. If you could go back and record and be the original singer for any hit... What would it be? I did it, and it's called Lover Girl. Tina Marie was like the s- most sickening vocalist of, uh, like, for me, all time. You know, like, everyone's, like, into Whitney and all that stuff, and yes, amazing. But for me, Tina Marie just really had, like, that that do pop it. soul. You know what I mean? Do, and, it, do it now. And, um, do, 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 oh, well, do, 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 actually, now. we're going to be playing the video. <gasps> Oh my God! Yeah. All right. um, yeah. This wasn't rehearsed at all. No, it, no, I, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know it wasn't. Um, who would play you in a movie about your life? 
Oh my god! 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 Can I tell you? Can I tell you after the video? <laughs> no. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Rapid um, fire. Fuck. Uh, oh. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Thank you, iHeartRadio and People Magazine. <laughs> 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 Freddie Prince Jr. Oh, I could sure. see that. Uh, that's just because I we know. watched Head Over Heels last night. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Way to reach. I, kind of, I, I was kind thinking tall, dark, movie. handsome, uh, big no, nose We're obsessed work. with that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got it, girl. Okay. Uh, the strangest place you've ever been kissed. Oh my and god! On his quotes. Body? Um, when I was eight, no, seventeen, no, no. when I was seventeen, I used to uh, um, flyer in West Hollywood, and I met up with this guy every time, and he used to fuck me in <laughs> the. Uh, I said kiss. Oh, okay. Well, that's I'm what sure I meant. that happened too. We used to but I was kiss. Used to, thank you. <laughs> in uh, in the the children's jungle gym in the West Hollywood Park. Ah! Oh. I know, right? <laughs> I, I can't. Him. I can't imagine what has gone down in that jungle gym. Oh, oh. Well, well it now was... it's becoming the AIDS memorial park. They're tearing that whole thing. There's they're still going to be a jungle gym. It's just not going to be right there. Well, they're, they're also, uh, that's called 24 Hour Fitness. Is that new jungle gym? <laughs> so that name is appropriate then, Jungle Gym. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Was his name Jim? <laughs> his, name was his name was Juan. His name was I loved him. The day that he stopped showing up outside of rage, I cried. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this oh. is The police got up. to him, don't worry about it. <laughs> and actually, he wrote a book about it. You don't know, but you're on the cover of it. <laughs> yes! Oh. Jungle Jim. <laughs> Jungle Jim. I love that. It's like a Tarzan motif. Oh god! Actually, you know what? I can. We can collaborate, co write. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. You, Tarzan. I, Rhea. People Magazine will do the. People Magazine I'll will do the. I'll be the monkey excerpt. in the corner singing. Um, what is, what is the, one of the funniest things that's ever happened to you on stage during a performance? Um, Dude, I don't know. I mean. A wig falling off, but that's not funny. That's embarrassing. You haven't had like like a person come up and do something funny or fall off stage or something. Oh my god, there's footage of this. There was somebody. I was doing a number at Foo Bar, so like it wasn't like a big stage or anything. But I was really in my element, and I was <laughs> and I was doing this song, and this like little queen came out of nowhere and started like jumping in front of me, started performing. I literally grabbed her, threw her on the floor, and thought like, yeah, finally, kept doing my number. She came out again. At that and point, so you got to embrace yeah. it. So, well, so at that, at that point, I laid her out. <laughs> and then I finished my number. I and then that. I left with a check. Okay. <laughs> That's the true win. From FUBAR, though, I would have cashed that real fast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys, tell me what happened at Pride. Before we go to break, we're going to talk about Pride. Um, Steven, you're on a float. We have pictures from that. But, like, you guys, like, what happened while I was in San Diego? Well, I wasn't on a, f a float. That was actually MAC Cosmetics. Am, am I, can, you, can I hear me? Because I can't hear myself. Okay, yeah. Good? Cool. Um, actually, it's because um, that was MAC Cosmetics. They were the main sponsor this year. And they had an installation, like, right in the Well, that's festival. a whole installation. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No Beautiful. floats this year. Yeah, there were no oh, floats. Right. No parade. It was, it was a march. That's what yeah. good of a gay I am. So, yeah. And here's you marching. <laughs> I love how you pull focus. You, you're you the only one without wearing, it looks like, like, a Fifth the, Harmony video. The robe. Everyone wanted to wear a robe, and I was like, I'm not wearing a damn robe walking down West Hollywood. I've worn less than this walking down West Hollywood. Why True are we story. in robes? So yeah. have I. And, <laughs> but, yeah. I shouldn't have. <laughs> but it, it was fun. It was a good feeling. So, it was great. No, the, everything was everything went awesome. Uh, Mac was amazing. Um on Sunday, Peppermint, uh, she's in the top four of the latest season of RuPaul's. Um, she has a documentary now that's coming out, too, yeah, by the yeah, way. Yeah, she does. Um, she performed uh, at the Matt Cosmetics booth, and they had us sort of interact with her on stage, and the Pride Festival, people really liked the performance, so they grabbed her, and they grabbed us, and they asked to do a performance on the main Pride stage. So then we, And that was just completely like... You and Brandy. Uh, by yeah, the way, that right. main Pride stage was epic it was like it Wango was good because i heard things from all i heard i heard the haters for for the music there's festival always haters it was really amazing the they went out, out this year yeah. for the main yeah. stage for although sure. i although for i wish sure. i could be at dc's tegan sarah's headlining theirs that's fun i want to wasn't miley at one this weekend too uh i don't know about this is she's shown up at la pride and done like a surprise thing was one it, time I dc pride was this last weekend no i think it's next because i know are that you DC sure DC pride oh was maybe last it was weekend. this weekend yeah, it was, yeah. Was, no. i saw a lot of white house picks. she was headlining dc miley got you yeah no, it was, it was a lot of fun. The energy was great. I've actually never done the festival before. I've always worked at you yeah. know, one of the clubs or something like that. And so this is my first time actually being in the festival. And it was, it was fun. It was great. Everyone was really, really nice. Everyone was really excited. We took photos for nine hours for two days. 
It's a long day. Where, like, and, and it was a little bit cooler this year. It wasn't like hot. Saturday, it was kind of cool. It was kind of slightly overcast. And you're in your underwear. So we had pockets, so it wasn't that bad. You Sunday, had pockets in your underwear? No, the <laughs> su- in the sun. <laughs> anyway, we were actually wearing, wearing, really, day of sun. We were actually yeah. wearing really cool <laughs> swimwear that Mac had made for us that they kept, people kept asking, you know, where do you get that? Where do you get that? And we're like, well, maybe Mac should start like a swimmer line or something. Well, especially if they bothered to create yeah. the swimwear. Yeah. I think that'd be a good. The whole, theme, the whole theme of the installation was the their new fruit line that they have so that's why the, the the dj booth was in a coconut and they had a giant pineapple and then the dancers we had a giant banana all fruits you guys for, for, for festival fruits. yeah How <laughs> Fruity. yes yeah very appropriate but no, it was great we had we had always had a line throughout the day raya showed up on sunday i'm sure you did <laughs> my pride was pretty chill yeah, on saturday was i, I stayed home on saturday no i stayed home on saturday and saturday night and prepped for uh, i had a dj gig at fiesta cantina on on Sunday from 12 to 5. Super easy. When are you DJ next? Because I really want to come and... Uh, every Thursday at Fiesta Cantina. Fun. Are you serious? Ooh, wait, from I 10 to 1. Let's go, because I, I, I really want to go. Yeah, yeah, I need to pick yeah. your brain, though, I because go um, I, my last birthday, I, I created a whole playlist and played that, mm-hmm. and then um, I did it at Revolver, and they actually like asked me to come back, and they were like, we liked everything you did, and I literally just like made it on like iMovie. Oh, yeah. I will pick your brain, because... That's oh, please. fun. Yeah, yeah please use my show to further your career. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. We're just going to have a whole like hour long conversation about this Patrick now. Every time Patrick comes on, it, it's the same thing. He gets like a Tony Award the next time and an Oscar. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's called networking, it, honey. Yeah. It, it, wait, isn't that I why always I'm doing the show? Yeah. 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 I, you're in the show because I'm, I'm obsessed with you. That's why you're doing the show. <laughs> okay. I always put myself in a room with someone I want to learn from, Alexander. Ooh. There we go. I like Open that. yourself up to learning. Oh, I'm closed. I'm closed for this season. I'll, I'll tell you that much. Uh, I've learned enough. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Ray, you've done, you know, like where you get ready super, super fast. You know, you have the makeup you, you use. So what happens when like a makeup company comes and says, hey, use our product? You're like, oh, God. I use it. I say how much? <laughs> right. But Is there a campaign? But like, Is, you, have, you have to practice with it. What if it doesn't work? She's like, a star. I'm she really good with my hands. Easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, yes, I, I do. Mm-hmm. and I'm good with makeup. Like I can figure it out. Um, I I just I signed a a campaign with Morphe Cosmetics, um, and I was. Gift- we have uh, that picture, right? Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh! Give me a brush. You there. work. Amazing. Oh, I gave I gave Stephen a brush yeah, today. Yeah, I was. Like, <laughs> yeah, so mm-hmm. A brush for what? I, well, I I put I don't tan my face, so I that tan probably made me where that so glitter came from. Little, that's what's like bronzer. No, the glitter was from. Um, <laughs> oh, you said that. <laughs> I, right. will t- I will take the touch though. Oh no, but on uh, the, <laughs> uh, turn engaged. The I mean, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You should see exactly. how <laughs> you should see how much glitter they threw on us this weekend because we were they airbrushed us both days and I can still see it. Glitter never gets out. Oh, you just pulled. I was wondering if there was like double stick tape though because uh, those of you who are not watching on video there's like a, a deep v it's not a v there, it's like a w it's like, it's like it's like a j, it's like a j-lo in that versace dress yes, exactly. situation and, I, and it was but it was know. staying so it was staying so perfectly fit to like exactly where you'd put it it doesn't move it's, that's yeah it's you like guys are holding all it up. the people that want to see steven's chesticles go to on the rocks radio show facebook and see the live stream of, of the well, show the, the microphone's kind of in the way oh oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, you guys! I, I just can't. Well, I'm glad Pride was a success. You know, uh, the the march was was a huge success. Um, let's just hope Every, yeah, that we went are wrong. entirely everything was great, prideful. And and Eva, I wanted to talk about your daughter at this point, if you don't mind. Yes, Talking about Pride season, yeah. we have a picture of your daughter. Your daughter uh, dances <sighs> with the boys. Uh, with Ariana Grande. Yeah, she gorgeous. Does. Yeah, gorgeous. And she actually, thank you. And she actually performs at a lot of gay prides because she's a rapper herself, too. Oh, really? Yeah. You guys need to come on the show together. Yes, it would be great. Yes. She is a blast. She's actually on tour right now with Ariana. Uh-huh. So, not to bring it down, but she was, she per- they performed that night in Manchester. Yes, she was there. Did uh-huh. you find out through the news or did you get a phone call? What actually, happened? My ex husband called me and, and he kept calling and he always calls a lot, so I kind of ignore his phone Booty calls. Booty calls. <laughs> Booty uh, drunk dialing, yes. <laughs> So I was like, what the fuck does he want? And I finally answered, and he said, you better sit down. Uh. And that's what it, when he said, there's a terrorist attack just happened at the concert where Gabby was at. And I... Did I, he lead with that she's okay? No. Oh. People need to do that, by that's the way. The I one would, time I was in a car accident, yeah. that I was like, I'm okay, yeah. but sit down. Like, but, he, what, but the thing is, in his defense... Uh, he didn't know. We didn't know anything. We c- I couldn't get a hold of her for about an hour and a half. Oh, my God. Oh and God. it was awful. awful. Mm. And then I finally did, and she was kind of crying, and they were backstage and stuff. But that was probably the worst day of my life as a parent, for sure. Um, anyway, so she's performed that. I don't know if she's done San Diego Pride, but I know she's done uh, Long Beach, a lot of them. She performs in a lot of Pride. Well, when she gets back, let's, let's, we'll let's do, try. We'll do it. We'll do it. 
Um, so you're a very prideful mother. So thank you for your support for the community. I am very. She's gorgeous, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Very gorgeous. And with Ariana? Yeah. Oh, work. work. That, the Manchester concert, I thought, was really well done. The Benefit concert was D- great. Yeah. Did you hear that yeah. Manchester well wants done. to give Ariana like a honorary um, citizenship there? Oh, oh. No, beautiful. I yeah. Although I will say there was there was one aspect of it that I, I that raised my eyebrow. Tell, yeah. Um in, in a funny I mean, I, I, I first want to say so much respect for her for doing that and, and for raising all that money and everything. But um what was interesting was Ariana's had a lot of great hits and um she came out and had and said, you know, we had put together a whole different show, but I talked right. to the mother of the youngest victim yes. and she wanted to hear the hit. So we're not going to do that like more sober. So we're going to do a happy show. And the song that she chose to do right after that was walk inside to side, which if you listen to the lyrics is about, um, walking side to side because you were a little too active the night before. And I thought, she has so many other hits to choose from that why that was the one she chose to play right after. I don't Just think I think in, I don't think she gave it a lot of thought and I also think that if you not think I know a lot of her fans are very young. Yes. They're so they probably don't, don't understand it. Songs. But like but there were so many other hits that actually in the in Would the context resonated. in the context of yeah. That were even um uh uh her uh no 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 like her big song if you took it in the context of why she was doing the show actually it was about a relationship but turned into being about like being empowered and right. and not being afraid there were so many other songs that I thought she could have chosen than that one <laughs> that has such Girl, an overtly. give her a break. She went through like some Like I said, thank you. I started, I I started with I saying, I started she with saying, showed up. so she much showed credit. Up. Well, I so think much it credit. happened yeah. within a very short yes. period Yes, agreed. That's why I started, I just wanted she, to point out that very interesting situation. There. But that being said, I think it was fantastic. She did what she did. Before I that, think she would never she's... have defended Ariana Grande, to be honest. But after that, no, I'll be honest. No, and I'm she handled it so fan. perfectly. She and did. I give well, so much respect because it's like, terrifying. When you put together a show, there's a whole lot of factors that come into play, and, not and she's just not one. there deciding her own show, by the way. She's and she didn't do it with like whatever. Every and, and can I just add also, she's a very young girl. Yes. And so a little sheltered right now. She has a big. She's a young woman. I've seen all of her new music videos. Yeah. No, meaning meaning that a lot of the what you're thinking like which. Which I think is very common sense doesn't really Hold on, go through her mind. You understand? She has a whole yes. team of people. And that she's do sheltered. And say she's and sheltered. Like she's in a bubble. Yeah. We, we have a caller. Hello. Can I say Hi. hello? Hello. Rhea, can I say hello? Oh, hey. Hello? It's, oh, God. It's Helen Keller. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's my cousin. Which one? This? There's a few people on the show. <laughs> hello? Yes. <laughs> hey, girl. Who's your cousin? Who's calling? Hi. Hi. Josh is my cousin. Josh. Oh. Oh, well, we don't use that name here. We use Rhea. <laughs> Rhea is my cousin. Who is this? Evelina or Bianca? Or... This is Evelina. Hi, Evelina. Oh Why your name? Hi. Like All your families are like named after fairies. God, Evelina, <laughs> Belina. <laughs> my, my abuelita was very <laughs> fierce when she put us all together, let me tell oh you. Oh, my gosh. I'm so upset. I'm going pee right now, and Mola's not oh. here. Oh. Oh. Oh, cute. Where are you calling you from? People just texted me. From the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, honey. Literally what city? going pee. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for giving us the attention in the bathroom. Uh, San, what Di- city? San Diego, right? Oh, San Diego. Mm. Yeah. Hey, girl. I was just in San Diego. How are you doing down there? Yes, good. We just flew in yesterday. We're in New York. Oh, oh my back. God. Uh, stay tuned because we're going to actually do a review of all the Broadway shows that are that are hot right now. What is your funniest memory of Rhea? When he shoved my head under the water in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something family. she would my do. Mom, Why do you keep bringing that up? <laughs> my mom used to do that to him, so he got back at her by doing it to me. Uh, <laughs> yes, your mom did. You, you know what? Yeah. You, <laughs> she did. She scarred me, me for life. Music video coming soon. <laughs> Her sister also tried to shove her underarm in my face because my mom did it to her. <laughs> the family legacy See? lives on. See? All the, all the it secrets. stays with you. It stays with the bloodline. <laughs> it stays. And I have had to suffer through it all. <laughs> Anyways. Well, you we sound very happy. You sharing well, it now. <laughs> yes. How old are you, honey? Uh, I'm 21. Good. You can drink. Go have a drink for us. Raise a glass. Thank you so much for calling in. Cheers, Mama. I love you. you. Cheers. Bye. I love you. That's so cute. She's so excited. I love it. I love it. I love it. My um, little niece, Bianca, her sister, is like the biggest Ray Latre fan. She has like a picture of Ray Latre above her bed. 
and like she has like all of her like makeup things oh, and I like love all that. and she's uh, I, I think she's like 10 or 11 or like you know 9 10 11 somewhere around there and it's just I just think it's so bizarre and, and another thing that like is so crazy when I go to do these shows and I go and perform all the fans are so young they're these young it's girls. It's YouTube because people Have are you, clicking on you, your YouTube. Are you stuff. familiar with uh, uh, Honey Mahogany? Yes, of course. Um, so I went to college with Alpha, mm-hmm. um, and well before it, doing drag was anything in his mind, he was a social worker, and he moved to San Francisco was a social was working in social work, and like got involved, and that's one of his big things now is doing. Um, reading to kids in San Francisco at the library. I think I saw that somewhere. Like he, he just posted reading. about yeah, it today, yeah. but oh, he's okay. been doing it for years. Um, it was even before he did Drag Race. Um, but that's a really big thing for him is this campaign to like go and read in libraries. It's, it's so, a I, lot of drag queens are doing do you think that. Maybe because we look like cartoons, or like, is it something about like the? It's like, the pageantry. Kids, it's kids it's, are it's really, being confident yeah, who you are. Really drag, I mean, it's guess it's like it's kind of like clowns with kids. Like the clowns either love they they either love the clowns or they don't love the clowns. But um, the the draw the the attention that I get from children is just it boggles my mind. I just hate children because, so much. Though. Uh, same. <laughs> <laughs> but Ray loves them. No They're one. delicious. <laughs> yes. The morning <laughs> snack. <Tastes> so good. <laughs> yes. This is so fun getting to know you, Ray. Like you know, I've I've known you from afar, but I mean, this this is so fun. Oh, there's a lot more where this came from. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just a shell. She's got, You're gonna she's come got back layers. and back and back. <laughs> we're gonna take a break. Uh, we are going to uh, take a take a moment, and we're going to actually sample your video, "Lover Girl," available on iTunes. And when we come back, it's all Ava Tamargo. <laughs> Budget is is pretty big. This is awesome. this is real. This is the Amazing. first time I ever like spent some money on it, and I get like to give a lot of credit to Kane O'Keefe who directed this music video and like and ki- it was my first music video, so I was kind of a nightmare. This is your first music video. It was my first one, my first solo Just music it was video. Your first one. It was my first <laughs> solo thing that I did alone, and that I was my project. Um, and so I, I figured out how to get the rights from Tina Marie and like how to do all that stuff so that I could sell it on iTunes and like uh, create a real product. And this this that moment actually in front of Chinese Grammas Theater was like it was in the middle of the day. We didn't have any permits. 
there was people everywhere, you know, doing their uh, tour tourism thing. And I literally was just like, get this footage. If they kick us out, then we'll just leave. But get this footage. Hit They're me, used to that, Hit though. me a playback. And he said, okay, one, two, three. And I went and I sang a cappella. And I did uh, the song in the middle. And everyone kind of cleared and made a circle. And my dancers just danced around me. And we did, like, the whole first verse and, and, uh, and first chorus. And then the security was like, break it up. And then we just... So one off. take, one we take. We pushed off, yeah. Went to, for that whole thing, that, that is was all gorilla story. style. Yeah. You guys go see all of Rhea Latre's videos on YouTube. Uh, you're singing your performances. You do makeup tutorials. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it it really is great. If you need a spelling, R H E A L I T R E dot com, and you can get all my stuff right yes, there. Yes, your website is very good, mm -hmm. by the way. Thank you. Um, not to be outdone, our guest, our lady of the hour, <laughs> Eva Tamargo, I I I, <laughs> from the Bronx, by the way. Right has been a successful international actress for so many years. We're not going to name the years because oh, we never give dates here. We never yeah. give dates here. You look good, girl. Yeah, well. It's like Death Becomes Her. Some <laughs> action of that is going on here. Something. Having played on Broadway and in TV and film, having studied in New York under Uta Hagen, mm -hmm. by the way, yes. and Sam Watterson. Did he ever try to make a pass at you? No. Oh, he's, yeah. he's handsome and he's known he for is. that. Uh, was a fan favorite on NBC's Passions for 10 years. Year. I can't believe that show was on for 10 years. Yes, it was. In fact, we have some really fun clips. That's, That's because you forget how old we are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I love it when people come up to me and they'll say, oh, I used to watch you on Passions when I was like in sixth grade. I'm like, And you were like, so was yeah. I. So yeah. we're both. Yeah. Right. <laughs> one of, one like, of I grew up on the show. Love, love, love Passions so much. Every day in high school, she'd be like, I'd be like hey, do you want to go do this? Uh, Passions is on. I gotta go watch it. Yeah. It was such a fun mix. <laughs> and, and we're going to talk about that all. Uh, most recently, playing the villain, in Tyler Perry's The Have and Have Nots yeah. on OWN, o Oprah's show, yeah. by the no way, way, girl. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I've seen some of and your interviews uh, that Tyler Perry led are on YouTube as well. Yes, they are. Like, uh -huh. you really worked with him and, and this cast. Yes. Welcome to the show, Thank Eva you. Tamargo. Thank you. Applause, Tony. Oh, I already oh, did yeah, that. Well, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. One of the things I'm, I'm obsessed with, other than you coming from the Bronx, like bringing it, you know, real right, style. Right. Studying with Uta Hagen, um, acting style is so important. And then you brought that style to stage, but also passions, which is so right. stylized. We're going to see some throwback oh. clips. Oh, no. Um, and, then, <laughs> oh, no. and then to the have and have nots. It's such a stylized almost classical in nature, almost Shakespearean. You think so, really? I think, you know, I, I used to take offense when people would say, oh, you're a soap opera opera actor and I used to say no I'm just an actor that's on a soap but it's a different uh, muscle uh hmm I don't know oh. it's kind of difficult to say because on soaps because there's three cameras and we move so fast yeah there's no there's not a lot of depth to a lot of what you're doing because not not acting wise but I'm saying there's not a lot of rehearsal so mm -hmm. what you see is pretty much a lot of times one take, two takes maximum. So I always Just feel like Rhea. it's like live, <laughs> it, it's almost like live TV. So what you're seeing is or, very or stage. Or right, exactly, or stage, but it's very for some people they feel it's melodramatic over the top. I just feel like you do what you can and you just run with it. Well, like do you feel like yeah. there's kind of like sort of a stigma against soap opera Absolutely. actors against uh, regular nice. because I feel I when I I'm a big housewives fan and I watch the Beverly Hills and I right. felt like that stigma being addressed with Eileen um, Davidson. With Eileen, yeah. yeah. It absolutely is a stigma and, and it's it's wrong because it's so you you would have to be on a soap set like we were for hours where you're doing a full episode a day if and not pages a, and pages and rewrites yeah, by the exactly. way you're in so, makeup and they're like oh this whole scene where you kill somebody has yeah, been rewritten yeah. now you kill them with uh, a paper clip and you're like I oh have, okay I, can I do have it. a great <laughs> anecdote about that um, I don't know if you guys remember John Spencer from West Wing he's passed on mm -hmm. um, but he we he and I did once um, we spoke at the AIDS walk together I did it in Spanish he did it in English and he said to me don't tell anybody, but I'm a big fan. And I was like, oh my God, this is John Spencer from West Wing, which I is run by it. Aaron Sorkin, yeah. who I yes, adore. Yes. And he said, and I said, oh my God, no, I adore you because of your show. It's so amazing. And he said, listen, what I do is easy. I have a great writer. You are on a soap and you have to make it so incredibly so much better because it's not like the writing is that deep and it's usually just moving the same storyline day to day. So it was the highest compliment coming from somebody who was on mm -hmm. a show that I admired with an actor, with a writer that I so look up to. 
and I still to this day feel that it's the hardest work that you can do as an actor. Well, I will so, say, I will yeah. say, um, just to, to turn it on its head, yeah. uh, uh, Alison Janney has a famous anecdote about how she had this big scene and she had been preparing all night for it for the West Wing, right. and um, she's sitting in her trailer. She, uh, they're getting her ready to shoot the scene, and they come and um, uh, they bring her the new script, and they go. Um, that one and a half page monologue that you had is now been rewritten, and they handed it to her. And oh, she—I guess she was coming out of her trailer. They yeah. were like, uh, and she goes, "Give me fifteen minutes." Walked back in, yeah. walked back out, came out, and like killed it. Yeah. And but, but that's a muscle to, to, it is to have a that muscle. to have that memorization. It skill. is a muscle. And when you're on a soap like I was for so long every day, it comes very easy. We didn't have a lot of rewrites, but what we did have was this, which is that you're playing the same character all the time. So a lot of times the storyline doesn't really move that fast. So you're kind of not always saying the same thing, but you kind of are because you're trying to get new viewers and to follow the storyline. Yes. So, but it is a muscle because it was before DVRs. Exactly, so. and we would have. We, this is the best part. We would have like film actors on as guest stars, and they would be like studying and doing it and getting into it, and then we'd shoot the scene, and they'd go. Okay, can I do it again? I go, no, no, that was it. We're done. <laughs> because you're so spoiled on a film set where you can have all this rehearsal time. And, and you get a lot of feedback, yeah. too. It's like, you're doing you do. it right, you're doing it wrong. Um, yep. But also, with a soap opera cast, let's be honest, some people are cast because of their looks, and their acting is not up to par. So you have all these different levels of acting, whereas the West Wing, we know it's going to look like, sure. like a shiny object where soap operas might be a little bit jerky. Well, I think... It's true because they are, you know, people tune in to watch soaps mostly. Well, there's not a lot left on television I candy. right now. I know I can't. <laughs> yeah. But it's not even I can't. You, uh, it's a lot of uh, the way they were envisioned was for sure. people that were doing how, like, uh, not that this is what's happening now, but yeah. like in you know, when they were first envisioned, it was for. It was the to housewives. advertise soap. It is soap, because That's it was housewives that yes. were working at home that were using soap to Shut clean. Shut. Up. <laughs> that's where the term, where the the term blue soap blue on my mind. <laughs> I never yes. knew that either. That's, yeah. Oh that's my god, that's amazing. That's, yeah. Where, yeah. that's, that's where, where I came from. They favorite this if you feel the same. Yeah. <laughs> no, but literally, they were opera. written yeah. because um, uh, uh, soap advertising. advertisers. Yes, yes. Advertisers. soap. Pro, like people that were producing soap wanted shows wanted something to help promote their Absolutely. product, and that was. I'm so glad you know that. Not a lot of people know that. Yes. And do you guys remember when Joan Crawford replaced her own daughter on a soap opera? And that was part of that film, actress not being able to fit in because she couldn't memorize the line. She was drunk. Right. <clears throat> I could never do a soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, My a, memory lot, I have so a lot awful. of respect for soap opera actors because I think that it might be a little bit harder. It is different, but it might be a little bit harder to have things thrown at you left and right and yeah. having to go to set a different day and different thing. Yeah. When, when you're doing a movie, you know, things get changed around here and there, but for the most part, the premise stays the same. Right. So I have a lot of respect uh, for you and your line Thank of work. You. And I think you're awesome. And Thank all you. you soap operas out there, you guys are amazing. <laughs> and don't let these movie hoes tell you any different. I think soap opera, I think soap opera makes some of the best actors and actresses. Absolutely. I mean, because a lot like, of big it's names so come, difficult going from that and then like it I feel is. like that's what I just don't I mean, have the memory. I just don't know that I would ever it, have the memory to do it. But you would yeah. because if you do it all the although Truth be told, you know, I was on the show for 10 years and I had uh, five kids on the show. <laughs> um, we're going to get to that because I have some yeah, clips about your poor kids. What, what, <laughs> what, what tricks were you like taught to like be able to, does it, you have to I, memorize a certain amount and sort of like, okay, I memorize everything in groups of seven, like line, like how do you no, like, you know? I, for, well, I, everybody's different. I yeah. have to say that. But I think for me, because I came from theater, I was, I always had a great memory, but I think I memorize subtext, what the scene is about and then the lines come easier. That's what I always say to actors. That's what I do. I don't memorize. But it's also a skill to even line. find subtext yeah. in. in well, well, I mean, not that you didn't have incredible writers, but yeah. it's it. But it's important to be able to even find that. Absolutely. But but also to your point, because I did the after show on on After Buzz TV for Young and the Restless, so right. I would have to watch all five episodes. And for people that have missed the day before, like you said, you have to say a lot of the same lines over and over again to drag out the story, but also to give exposition to people that might have not seen it the day before. So you're saying the same thing, but in different ways. How do you keep that different well, this in is your what, mind. This is what I have to say to that. That that was a question that got I got asked a lot when I was on the show. It's no different than theater. If you're doing a play, you're doing the same line every night, but you got to make it like you're doing saying it for the first time every time. Yeah, but if you go so, up, you can go back to that line. Well, but I mean, there's a little bit of room to improvise on a soap, even though you know we don't like to. But there is room to improvise if you forget a line or if you kind of like go off course a little bit. You can improvise for sure. I want to play a fun clip, and just to show the beauty of passion, 
Um, and your poor kids have just went through hell. This is a scene uh, where it's a lethal injection, by the way. Oh my God. Uh, I mean, I will say, on the scale alive, of soap though. opera's passion, oh, no, like, dead, went yeah. all we did. the way. We did. We did. Yeah. We did. Not a lethal injection. Yeah. Okay, but I, I, I want to set this up because we're just going to watch a few seconds, but I wanted I wanted to show the beauty of the cast, and then there's an extra who is the guy that presses the button, and just to see the contrast of like who the cast is next to like, the poor guy. <laughs> but, so mean. but also, <laughs> look how beautiful <laughs> the guy that's Dying by lethal injection is so hot, and he's your son, right? Yes, he's yeah, my son. He's so my wait, son. he was playing your son. I have five kids on that. Show. That could have been yeah. your husband, though. Yes. Well, you know what? When we met the first day we met on the set, which was many, many moons ago, he came up to me and he said, "Please tell me it's not true that you're playing my mom. I was almost gonna come over here and ask you out." And I was like, "Hey, they right. did on the brain no, you I'm available the same on Tuesday. Age. Florence yeah, Anderson. Right. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Florence Anderson was <laughs> shooping her own kids, so why not? But you guys, the scene is—is is, I mean, I'm, I'm not making fun of it, but I'm having fun with it. No, no. You, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So this scene is uh, lethal injection. There's a big secret. He has fans in the room. His family in the room he has enemies in the room but look at all the sexy men behind the glass and then look at the guy that has to push the button go ahead tony no 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 gorgeous blonde you're making a mistake Louise is innocent right? yeah. and you're not <laughs> thought of living sexy this guard again is unbearable that's you uh, there's uh, our girl there's our girl look at that sexy boy so sorry. Come on, want to go out sometime? Hey, if you people cannot control yourselves, I will have you all removed. Oh, Why don't we uh, calm down a little bit while they prepare? I hey, look at the sexy sense. guard. He's so. He's I just so hope that nothing goes wrong. No, he was so a series regular that year. Yeah, we're, right. But, yeah. Yeah. The condemned is ready to. Oh, this part! Oh! Oh! Okay, okay. The one, the one that kills. And you the, know what? The one that yeah. kills is the death button. That's 90, that's 97 that's people were called in for that. Isn't that weird, right? That is probably so true. Okay. Right? I want to cut. But true. I want to cut to the next scene, uh, Passions. This is really intense. This is with your daughter. God, can your family just, like, take a break? This No, this is your sister. And daughter, right? <laughs> what is no, this? A uh, Chinatown? Uh, yeah, I, exactly. No, no. My she played my sister who came right. back from I don't know where, and then that's my daughter. Right, and my daughter. Okay, yeah. so so let's play. <laughs> let's let's play this. It's sister. like that is my daughter. daughter. She doesn't wear wigs. <laughs> right? No, <laughs> that's her hair. It's actually Raya's hair. <laughs> <laughs> please don't, please. But what I love about the scene is you it. actually have to be real in this scene. <laughs> Those are tears, girl. Uh. Uh. No. The music, everything. Oh, thank God. Thank you, Juanita. Oh, you don't think me her. yet, Pilar. Your daughter has led an evil life. Oh, oh, the knife! Oh, girl. She deserves to die slowly. And you deserve to watch every scream, every agonizing moment. No! <laughs> Love it. Wait, what yeah. happened? I, I know. You guys have I to rewatch Passions. The to <laughs> All of us are just like. But this is I'm what I'm my pearl. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 this no, is no, what no. Eva had to deal with when she got a script. It's like, oh, okay, this week, okay, <laughs> great. Yeah, it's so true. I went through so much on that show. All characters do on a soap. It's like know, Titus Adronicus. You're like losing all your kids. No, all no, nothing ever gets resolved. Otherwise, and then there's no conflict. There's right. no drama. So let's flash forward to Tyler Perry's show. Yeah. Now, number one, I want to know what the energy on the set because Tyler Perry. Was he on the set all the time? He directs every episode, honey. Was that weird? No, not at all. He's wonderful to work with. Because he's his with. big personality. He's wonderful to work with. He actually, me and John Schneider and maybe two other actors came from soaps, and so which was a great thing because he is very quick. Yeah. And he he's one of those directors where he's kind of like counting on you to do all your work. I mean, he doesn't really give you much. And... Um, he improvises a lot. He makes you improvise a lot. So it was, it was, I think, a great experience because it's really, for somebody like me that came from soaps, it was like, I walked in and I was like, okay, let's go. I'm ready to play. Whereas a lot of the other actors were kind of lost for a little bit. But uh, he's on set every day. He directs every single episode. Interesting. But he also yeah. also does a lot of theater, too. He, do, he understands listen, that. I used to say to him, do you sleep standing up? Because, I mean, I, don't, I can't. He does so much that man. He really does. It might make sense that him and Oprah are close because uh, of course. they have this. They have a similar work ethic. The same work, work ethic, ethic yeah. and they, you know, they put a lot into their work. And when the show came out, were you like, "Oh, I'm on the own network"? Were you like, there was no nerves or uh, anything? N well, you know, I'm an old hag, man. I don't yeah. get nervous. Oh, but your face. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't get nervous. I was just more um, proud, you know, because it's kind of what Oprah Winfrey represents for a lot of women. 
I mean, that's her demographic. Let's be real. And gay men. Uh, and gay men. I love right. bread. Right. I love bread. <laughs> we all love. Uh, bread. I love that's bread. what I take from. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. When Maya Rudolph does Oprah, I love bread. It's so funny. <laughs> and so skinny good, bitches laugh about it. This is what it, I used to say to people. It. Right. My I had nothing better in life to have a second to be on a show for the second time a successful show and then your boss is Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry. I mean, come on. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. Let's watch a little bit for, from this. Yes, John Schneider, you guys. The whole cast, by the way, sexy, sexy, sexy. What is wrong with you? Watch this scene, you guys. This family. Oh, this guy's so hot. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> you guys, watch what happens. Oh. I really don't want to hear this again, Wyatt. Please. You've been given everything. Everything. And what do you do? You get high. So please, I don't want to deal with this. Now get up. You think money's answered everything? No. Mm. No, I think you think that the money is the cause of all your problems. Now, come on, Wyatt. Get up. I love the film saturation, I, by the way. Yeah, it's... <sighs> come on. Come on. He plays John Schneider's son on the show. Yes. This guy. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did you see that booty, you guys? Uh, Ooh. You want me some money? You, you don't want to give me Wyatt, money? I'm going to make please. you give me money. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Wyatt? Press pause. He's doing it all. Press, press pause. What are you thinking? So, no, no, no. <laughs> I want is, you yeah, guys take us back to that no, moment. No, no, wait, wait, wait. I want you guys to listen. What's going to happen? The shade of the scene. But uh, yeah, like also, what were you thinking? When he what had were you thinking you? when you had that man on top of you? I was, <gasps> oh boy, am I so blessed. Oh, <laughs> see, I love you. <laughs> listen to her next lines. The shade. I'm obsessed with this name. Your breath smells like you've been drinking baby's milk. Mm. <laughs> Good Stop. And I feel it. Oh, is that what that is, huh? Yeah, I can feel it. Uh, I thought it was a tube of lipstick. <laughs> oh, little boy. You when are you evil. Grow up, and I do mean grow. <laughs> then you can come see me. Until then, get off me. Is that what you told my father? Oh, mm. what? I know he's a man. How long have you two been having an affair? What are you talking about? I read the email. I have his phone. <laughs> All right. Oh, I, I'm already. I'm hooked on that one already. You know, right, right? you know. <laughs> Wait, can I, I come to... over for the viewing party right. later? I know, like, <laughs> what? I know, tell me about it. I have a little anecdote about that scene because yes. this young man. Aaron O'Connell is amazing. And he's from like the Midwest, super sweet guy. And he was having a tough time with the scene with me because, you know, he's got to be on top of me and he's such a gentleman. And you and guys make friends on the I, set. Exactly. Yeah. He's like, and I see him like a son, honestly. Yeah. So Tyler Perry's on set and he's directing. He's like, I'm coming out there. So he comes out <laughs> and he tells him, and get he makes out with him? No. Oh. He, Tyler Perry gets on top <laughs> of you. I've heard a few things about me. Tyler Perry. Yeah, no, well. Uh, he, oh. <laughs> he actually said, this is what I want you to do. You need to really take over. Because he's trying to rape me, really. And then Tyler gets on top of me, and I was like, oh. he's a big man. You know, to show him that this right. is what you need to do and when he was done. So you had sex with like, Medea. <laughs> <laughs> Medea goes both Which is interesting, though, because, <laughs> because, because the way he still ended up playing that was so was almost gentle. It, like, it, it was. It, he had a tough time because, you know, it's tough. For, you know, another guy... He would have been like, oh, let me get in there. Yeah. <laughs> but Aaron was like, uh, he was comfortable. He was uncomfortable, and it was not easy for him. It's not easy for. Anybody. But you know what? That almost makes the scene more interesting because it's there like, was a lot of tension. In yeah. That scene. Yeah. Exactly. It didn't make it. Didn't make it. You didn't automatically hate him. You were involved in the situation and how both sure. people were dealing with like, it. I'm reading exactly. him. And also because <laughs> the characters, the way the characters are, is like I kind of raised him, and he's almost like a son to me. So it was kind of. That was really the underlying. But you found out like his dad was a jerk, I even have, though he was I John Schneider from Dukes of Hazzard. I know, oh, but God. I have kids with his father, so technically, though he has half brothers that are my sons. I was like, you, you were know, having at that point, not have nodding. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. There baby. we go. Woo! There we go. I like that. Take like another that. sip, Patrick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so one <laughs> question. Uh, <laughs> Put another nickel in. Anyway, uh, <laughs> another question we got a lot from you was, uh, because you played maids. Right. Um, are you afraid to do that? And do you think Latinas will ever not play maids in a soap opera? I hope that's true. Uh, but this is what I say to that. What I did for a living, meaning what the character did for a living, was her job. 
I played a character. Very different. People used to say to me, oh, because you play the maid. I go, no. I Because I was the matriarch of the Latino family, and I'm yep. the matriarch of this Latino family. Yes. It just happens to be what we do. Is it a little bit of a stereotype? Yes. But you also have to understand that a lot of times what we're trying to, on a soap opera, they're trying to attract a certain audience. And so people that are Latinos, let's say, that are upper middle class or higher educated are not really tuning into soaps, if you get what I mean. So right. so they're really targeting that audience, the mom, uh, maybe my mom, m women that are still staying at home watching soaps that can relate to that character. If you make somebody who's too too rich and too blue, uh, you know, elitist, then you kind of lose those people. But at the same token, I hope it does change because there, we are, we, and I include myself in that, are out there. I always say I don't ever feel represented in the Latino, in, in, in the arts, meaning myself, like born and raised in New York, you know, I, I don't really see me on television ever. It's always somebody like that, that I'm playing, you know, that type of thing. But it's also important because, because it, yes, it's a stereotype, but there is a large demographic there's a large percentage of Latino women that are doing that still. Like, like, so you want to represent, you want to represent somebody that's actually out there, but you also hope that somebody's there representing you. Exactly. But I, here's what I have to say to that, what you just said, which is what I used to say. The, the, one of the reasons why in Hollywood we see so much of the Latino being the gardener or the housekeeper or the bouncer, whatever it may be, it's, it's because of that. Because Hollywood started in the West Coast. So the majority of the Latino population in on the West Coast, which are a lot of Mexican immigrants and stuff, that's what they do. Had Hollywood happened in New York, totally different story because my Puerto Rican friends, Dominican friends, we watch and we go, I don't relate. I didn't know I was a minority until I moved to the West Coast. Interesting. <laughs> I always say right. that. It's like, but you guys remember what right. J-Lo's big movie was Made in my, uh, Made, made in Manhattan. She played an Italian. Well, there's also a whole show about, she was? about, about, about uh, Devious my, Maids. Oh. Yes, Devious with, Maids. With uh, and they Eva Longoria as the producer yeah, exactly. of that show. Exactly. Yeah, uh, The Wedding Planner, she played Italian. Oh, but she in Maiden Manhattan, Manhattan, the wedding she planner was, was the maid, and she, she was, was maid. like, yeah, from the Bronx. But yeah. then she fell in love with Ray Fiennes. I mean, come on. Mm. <laughs> oh, he does nothing for me. Oh, really? Oh, he can he give it all to me. No, no English people <laughs> are so boring, and their teeth. <laughs> that, and their no, not eyes. all English people. Yes. Prince, Prince about, Harry about to be can the get senator, it. honey. But Prince no. Harry can no. get it. <laughs> Listen, because you're you're thinking looks. I'm thinking he's a brilliant fucking actor. That's what he does for me. I could look at his debit card. I'll be fine. But Eva, but but you got cast as the maid. But you're you're. Your character grew and your storyline grew in, right. in both. So, right. um, so that's it is true. I mean, keep fighting it, the good fight. Well, it it's shows that it shows that your maid is not just some sort of stereotype. It's it's a real person. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's just what it's, she does. I'm sorry. She, she or he yeah. is a real it's person. It's just what she does for a living. It's not like. And that. you like playing the villain a little bit too. I love oh, it. That's the God. most fun. Are you kidding? Who gives a shit about a nice guy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice. baby. That's why Ray loves oh, being Ray. Right, baby. Bad boys Come to the now. front for show. Okay, but <laughs> but I would say that you're the bad boy in a relationship. So are, do you date other bad boys or do you date nice people? Um, honestly, I hadn't dated anyone for like two years until like what five, six months ago. You 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 you, you actually have like very calm, stable relationships. You know, like, like that's what you look for. Well, like, like, look no, that's that's, that's like, what I that's want. Not Ray no, no. dating. I don't mean like like no, in recent the, years. I mean, I mean like what you, what you strive yeah. for now is what, like like your last. I think your last gig, what you had with well, him was now very I know. Sweet. Well, now it's because I'm a, an adult, right. and now I know what I want, and I know what I deserve. So I mean, of course, like I'm this crazy nightclub. Party girl, drag queen. When I you see know your I mean? Instagram girl. You're 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 <laughs> locked. Well, you know, she has a Josh like, on Instagram just of Josh. I um oh, I uh, am all those crazy things. Uh, but at home, I like I, we like, all try, are. To, I try to yeah. But I try I to keep it like really cool. And I'm a very good boyfriend. I'm a We're just very We're just catered to up. my man. I want my man to feel like he's the only one. He is 100. He's the only one I want to see. And th and that's that's where I'm at now. So as soon as I didn't feel like this relationship was gonna be something that I wanted, I was like, no, I'm cool. You go over there and do your thing because if that's what you want, I cannot give it to you. <laughs> Oh, that's called knowing that. yourself. Yeah, that is knowing. Yeah. When but you it's know easier yourself, said you attract than done, to be honest. Yeah. Too, though. Well, because you, you attract who you are. Being who strong being. in that conviction. You know? I attract uh, crazy people. <laughs> Why well, would you same. do that? We can talk oh, about that. Honey. <laughs> we can talk about that. <laughs> and I'll come full, full circle. Ah, <laughs> uh, Eva. Yes. Rapid five. Oh shit. Okay. This is hard, girl. Okay. <laughs> your <laughs> sexiest. Your sexiest co-star. That walks in the room and you're just like, ah. We just saw him. Oh, that I've, oh, that I've worked with the, or that I want to work with? No, no, that you've worked with. John Schneider. 
Yeah. You guys, Dukes of Hazard. I'm sorry. In his, no, oh. no, fuck Dukes, Dukes of Hazard. Have you seen the man? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, he's he's we're, we're the same How age. tall is he? Oh, My fans are just like, rewatching like Smallville Oy. right now. Yeah, what? Smallville, because you get both Oh, of them. yes. Smallville. Uh, what is the last show on TV that you binge watched? I'm binge watching right now Homeland, actually, which mm. I think oh, is really interesting. interesting. Who would you cast as your villainous sister? And it could be any actress in the world, and you're gonna you're gonna film this. <laughs> uh, after Raya, it would be uh, Kate Blanchett. Ooh, Ooh. Yeah, she's playing, yes. is she playing a villain in the next Thor movie? She's she looks she so good. She was a villain in Blue Jasmine, but people don't realize that she was the villain in Blue Jasmine. Anyway, uh, uh, what would your real housewife intro be? So the camera comes in, and you turn, and you're like. Do you watch oh. Real Housewives? Uh, uh, no. Can I give you mine to, yeah. to give go, you time go. to think? Go. So mine is, I'm a stickler for the rules, unless I'm the one breaking them. Oh, I see. Or like Ramona would turn the camera like, I'm an acquired taste. You don't like me? Acquire some taste. It's, it's, it's like the little my, tagline as they face know. the camera. One of my one. really good. I got it. Oh, okay. Oh, good, good, good. Oh, go, go, yes. go. Oh, she's, she's doing even turning. Yes. I'm going to give you some advice because I'm not using it. <laughs> 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 and finally, <laughs> that was that was good. That was good. Yeah, that was, that was good. good. What is the title of your biography? I'm not done yet. Yeah, oh. that's really yeah, good. That's a good one. Well, the show is not done yet. Uh, <laughs> we need everybody's input because we're talking about pop culture and Broadway reviews. Uh, first, let's give a shout out to our sponsors. Thank you, Test Loop. If you're traveling from LA to Palm Springs, San Diego, OC, you're gonna go in a Test Loop. Cheaper than an Uber, and it's amazing. Go to testloop.com. Uh, Panache Optical Gallery, who provides uh, custom eyewear sunglasses for all the celebs. In fact, I have my own pair. We're going to get to Panache with our shady moment. <laughs> also, Spunk Lube, you guys. Everybody goes home with a bottle of Spunk Lube. Yes, They God. are tried or true. Do I get one? Yes, everybody goes home. You already used yours. Uh, well, we've been out. Dana looked up real fast <laughs> and like, no, he didn't. <laughs> anyway, Spunk Loop has been our tried Oh, to no, he knows. He knows. <laughs> 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 also, our roommates, no. remember? <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, there's no butter for my toast. Uh, oh, you know why oh. she ran out of the Spunk Lube. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Shut up, Rayla Tribe. <laughs> no. <I'm... laughs> anyway, also, Bear Cubs and Scruff, uh, they're the account on Instagram that retweets all of our stuff, and they celebrate the male form in all forms. Rawr. Uh, thank you to our fashion sponsors, Swish Embassy. If you want a funny T-shirt to wear and be cool, go swish, to Swish, swish Embassy. Swish. <laughs> Another one in the basket. <laughs> we'll get there in a second, I think. <laughs> yes. And do for the people. They do uh, male accessories. They do amazing bracelets. They even make me look a little bit butcher. But they give... Really? They s How dare Not you. A bracelet will do that for you? It is a great bracelet. <laughs> I almost said something. Like that. It is a great bracelet. Uh, but uh, support them. Uh, they also support wildlife conservation efforts of WWF and Wild Aid. Follow us on Twitter uh, and Instagram at On The Rocks on Air, Facebook On The Rocks Radio Show. Book me for a wedding, funeral, or quinceanera. I'll be there. Info at On The Rocks Radio Show. We need everybody's opinion on pop culture because there's a lot happening that's very deep. <laughs> uh, it's pop culture after it's all. I would like mm -hmm. to introduce Stephen Daler, uh, who's going to lead us our pop culture segment. Start it off, Tony. Love this, by the way. <laughs> on the Rocks is proud to present Pop on the Rocks, your daily dose of Daler with your host, Stephen Daler, bringing us the latest dish in pop culture. Take it away, Stephen. I'll be in the corner drinking. Everyone's mask for mask until Bernie comes on. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, okay, so this week, uh, I'm bringing in a couple of 90s girls that haven't been in the picture for a little bit, and they both had news stories, so it's kind of funny that it happened at the same time. But I'm starting with Amanda Bynes. Uh, she's had her first interview in about... Four or five years. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everyone saw that she had a very public breakdown. She's she was under a fifty one fifty. She was going through a lot of issues, hiding in Starbucks bathrooms and doing all these. She things. was like Misha Barton. Except <sighs> so, so maybe like uh, you know yeah, yeah. a little bit worse I'd yeah. say than Misha. Misha was able to keep it just in the clubs. She was just all over the place. But um, she did address the um, 
her famous tweet about asking Drake to murder her vagina. Oh. <laughs> Tony, play the picture. She does not. She still doesn't look well. She does not look like Amanda Bynes. By the she way, she doesn't. I don't. I agree. I don't feel like she's still. Well, looks but the like last her, but time that you saw Amanda Bynes be Amanda Bynes, that before picture, she was like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a girl. <laughs> She was like not white people magazine. You did her she was like Alexander. <laughs> she was like fifteen. Well, like, it's actually your wig from last well, night. I mean, she did turn it around. She's going to I love Rip. She's <laughs> right. Stop. She's I don't. Love. She's, she's going to fit him right now. She's so she's doing well for herself. Um, but she was she's she's, she's in school. She, she, she's in school. Can you imagine being her teacher and you're like on the roster. You're like, but we were just saying like, can you imagine Shu. being sitting next to Amanda, Amanda Bynes and just being like. <laughs> What's going on? Like, how's everything? Like, just because like, you just know it was so public. Or her at the cafeteria, you'd be like, "What is she eating? What's yeah, she not what's, eating? What's going on? Um, who's she, she, she hanging out with?" But um, she uh, so she said that she was not. She was actually not being insincere. She she handled it really really well. And she said, um, "I was saying I'm I was saying murder my vagina. I was serious, but I also was on a lot of drugs." <laughs> which which was very. I've said worse. That, <laughs> <laughs> say yeah, on this radio show. <laughs> <laughs> she she thinks Drake is hot. She still thinks Drake is hot. She was just trying to be really funny, I guess, and that was like her way of saying like, let's do it, you know. But is Drake hot? Yes, not for me, but I see it. He's like the guy I next can door. Understand it. I he's understand it too. Fine. He's he's tall. more than, okay. He's, he's not wide. for me, but he's, he's more than the guy man. next he's door. He's talented. He's on SNL. He's yeah. very talented. Like, he's so, so sexy. sexy. Yeah. Did you say so he's on sexy. SNL? He's talented. He's yeah, there's good. a lot on SNL that is not. Uh, well, then you apparently haven't watched it in two years. And let me tell you something. If Nicki Minaj is jealous of some other bitch because of Drake, Drake has got it going on. True, true. Okay. But she also said um, some news about her career. She's, she's planning it back into acting. Um, she does want to be guest stars on like shows that she enjoys. Maybe she'll be on Will and Grace. Who knows? They have a huge reboot coming up. I know. Um, I want to be on that. Right? I know. I, <laughs> well, I can't you wait know, to see that. Me too. Uh, and I hate to say that. it, but uh, the maid on Will and Grace is not doing well health-wise. I don't think well, she's she was in a new... She was in a wheelchair for that uh, little special. Mm. Yeah. She did a show at the LA Gay and Lesbian Center, by the way. She supports our community, so... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Much I'm love sure to they'll, her, they'll find sure. a way. I'm sure to include her in some way, but well, probably her, not. Her in the daughter same. should come in and be. Like, oh, oh, you you can play her, her daughter. Who? Oh, Raya. <laughs> oh, I would play her. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I actually yeah. love. Wow. I actually Wait. know Will McCormick. Oh, do you? Actually, that would <laughs> well, be you know why? Why? I'll tell you why. I have actually. a good story about that. Oh, let's hear it. We used to shoot on the same lot. Passions was shot on the same line as oh, Will and Grace, so why yeah. we got to know each other at the he gym. He loves to flirt, by so the you way. So there's your in. Find Who it, said get that it. he loves to flirt, <laughs> oh. I, Anyway. But yeah. Anyway, so now we're moving on to our next 90s uh, child star. Uh, Lindsay Lohan is back in the news. I'm obsessed. Oh. Do you see the picture we have? Oh, yes. Thank God you've got that picture, because that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about. So she is returning to acting in the second season of a British show, obviously, because Lindsay has made it very clear that she does not like being in the U.S., and she does only likes being in the UK. So it's called Sick Notes. And um, she's 30 and she looks like she's 60 with that hair. Like, what's she doing? <laughs> it's very Gillian Anderson. It's very mom. Mom hair. mom hair. Mom hair. She just but had it's different. Hey, it's watch it. I'm she just mom. had to go you to have the UK. Amazing hair, though. Oprah said, You <laughs> fucked up. You get out of America. <laughs> she sent her to the UK. <laughs> Oprah's like, Bye, girl. Yeah, go do a Oprah, show over there, Oprah girl. I gave you a chance. Oprah <laughs> is sitting next to somebody that, that sure. has worked with Oprah, or for Oprah at least. Uh, Oprah gave her like the biggest oh, opportunity in yeah. the world. Truth, yeah. No one gets that opportunity from Oprah. I mean, come on, it's she so really yeah. went out on a limb. Except Ayanla, and Ayanla like? couldn't even fix her life. Ayanla. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be the person, and I'm usually the one that's like, eh. she looks put together. She's also alongside. Uh, can you play the picture, Tony? She is. She's put like together. Rupert from Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that other guy, I don't Ron know Weasley. his name, but he's he's a well-established actor in Britain. Yeah. Maybe she's going to work on her acting because before she was a mess, she was a great actress. Very she, good actress. Know, uh, I, I, hope yeah. for, I hope for the best always for Lindsay because I feel I feel very connected to her with her some way because I feel like I was the crazy crazy party girl and I am the crazy party but girl. she paid to and do it, that. Yeah, and so did she. So does she. <laughs> but like, I feel like she just got the bad run to the press and a lot of it like spiraled out of control Spears because, yeah. yeah, and it spiraled out of control for her and I feel like I, I hope that she can grab the control of her career and really get back on track because she was always an amazing actress. Yeah. Um, Except for I, that movie, Listen, Dick. I, I I can't. See, I didn't mind. I thought she did great. I thought she. I, I don't know that Come she did on, great, but guys, I thought she did. Honest. I thought. I mean, she the did movie fine. she did before that was the one with the fucking uh, uh, Volkswagen Beetle. 
Well, oh, wait, did Herbie. you hear Herbie. Herbie. Wait, but did Free you, sponsorship. Did you hear <laughs> What movie is it though with Tyra Banks where she plays a doll and that's coming oh, back? Oh, uh, uh, not Super Size Me. Um, <laughs> No, but it's not. close. It's yeah. close to yeah, that. But well, Lindsay was in the original, and so she wants her to come she, back she to be in the next, the next one. one. So maybe she'll be back in the next Lindsay, one. Lindsay, get it together. We're yeah. all rooting for you. Yeah. I'm she, rooting for she you. She already looks like she's put it together. Yeah, yeah. I think she's good. And what? British people yeah. do not put up with shit because British people are drunk all the time, but they know how to show up to work. True. Yep, I'm and, British. They don't, and they don't put up with Hollywood. Yes, they don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So next on our list of events that have happened, um, famous actor, popular Batman, wa- uh, Adam West, passed away this oh. last week. Oh. I'm very sad about this because he's one of my favorite characters on Family Guy. He yes, plays, he plays the mayor, which is named after him, Adam I- West, and that character is so freaking hilarious. And he created that whole like campy. He was that can't be Batman for nineteen sixty six. He knew what he was doing. He was the bright dark. He called himself the brightest bright dark night. Yeah, the, the bright, bright night. night. Bright night. Yeah. Um, oh, a that. funny story yeah. about Adam West. Uh, so we were looking for wedding venues, and same as our apartment, we were like, we don't want to bother looking for through a ton. We went to one, and we were like, okay, we think we would want this one. We're walking through, and uh, the woman you're talking about your personal wedding, not your marriage to Adam West. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. But <laughs> it gets there in a second. Um, the woman's walking us through the venue, and she, and she just ha- happens to say like, oh yeah, actually, um, so this used to be Adam West's house. Work. So we're getting married in Adam West's house. Oh, oh, you signed cool the deal. Yeah. Wait a minute. Did you send Work. out the invitations? Not yet. Because once again, it's next March. So there's some time. Is it going to say Adam's West House or the address? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it'll 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 probably <laughs> say the draw address. People. <laughs> what I like about Adam West is that he played with his own role, and he was very supportive in so many different communities. And he was yeah. he was yeah, the fun he, guy. Yeah, he was always so fun. He never took him, like the thing is a great. He didn't exactly. take himself seriously. So that, that's why I love the character of Adam West because you just were like, that's probably something Adam West is saying. And they just probably yeah. have him come in and he just would like read it and be like, whatever. I don't, like, but he, he um. He was he a did, gentleman. He did that for years. He did like PSAs as as Batman. You he know, kept whole, a very youthful energy about himself. They brought it back in the Lego Batman boot movie with. I think yeah. he even did a, a, a character. I think he brought they brought him back for like one of the Batmans and like the pow and the kick and the whatever. That was just that was such a everyone knows that era. Adam West, uh, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Such a great right. man. All right. So next on our list. Uh, Forbes named their highest earning celebrities, and Beyonce is the highest earning female celebrity. Not the first time. Not the first time. Mm-hmm. She's also, but she's also not number one. She's number two. Number one is P Diddy, which is like what? Yeah, he's the top female. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, did no, I top, say that? top celebrity. Like, oh, but but the top female, female is Beyonce. But she came in number two. But she did. She made a whopping one hundred five million dollars, which is. Amazing. I mean, it's thanks to her, um, her tour was super successful. Her releasing the lemonade, everything like that was. Her having twins. It's all calculated. Oh, that's also a thing right now. There's like a running rumor that everyone, all of her fans, because she's kind of been like kind of laying low, that they're like, did she, is she, did she secretly have the twins already? Which I mean, do we be- really care though? I mean, everyone. Really I mean, does. yeah, everyone yeah. wants to see those well, people. Ma- I mean, that I don't care. I, I mean, really don't so much, care. I think so it's much, unfair to I, to. To decide whether she had them herself or not. I mean, I don't know. I feel like nobody really had, knows. Oh, no, I think no, everyone just wants to know that. if they exist if in the world. Had, well, yeah, I mean, wouldn't they be able to tell? Well, with the, like time wise, n- well, <laughs> basically though, that's what they're saying that this she's is the time around the time where this is the window she where had she had him already, have, and right. she's been kind of laying. I mean, the, like, and you can't really trust the photos that she posts on Instagram because they're very calculated with their. But Instagram. why do we care so much? Because it's Beyonce. Beyonce, and there was so much. <laughs> Alexander, if you were having a baby, you would want everyone to be wondering whether or not you had I'm one. Having, I've had two well, right now during the show. Exactly, <laughs> and you want to tell everyone. <laughs> but it's, well, there's so much scandal with the first pregnancy. There hasn't been any scandal with the second. I want Beyonce to release a song that I could sing to. Well, there's also that's well, horrible. that's gonna be like in sixty years when her voice lower lowers. <laughs> I wish I'd gotten that, that out right. right. Oh. Oh. Uh, but uh, fucked it up again. You know what? They are actually <laughs> still. They're still trying to do. They're still trying to trademark Blue Ivy. They haven't been able to do that yet. I wonder why. <laughs> you think so? I but you know, careless. speaking of Forbes, because I'm a beauty lover, and because of the beauty. She got on the Forbes list. She is the youngest person to ever be inducted into the Forbes list, and it well, is Kylie Jenner. Kylie Jenner yeah. is the youngest girl works that. That's how I react. To amazing. Oh, but she didn't earn wait, that wait, 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 w
like the the issue with her, them is that it was a camo situation and but uh, it wasn't it was a specific like it was exactly the same design they showed the photos that damn side. I mean that's I, I looked mean, at the photos they are they're close they're not exact but on another note with that Kim today released that she's going to be doing a her own beauty line Kim Kardashian West Beauty she's obsessed with the Kardashians and I uh, duh <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, Willem's uh, I mean not Willem <laughs> well, hi Willem no, my no sister afraid. Um, no afraid. Uh, Kim Kardashian uh, what she's releasing is like Kylie's known for her lip things and her highlighters and stuff like that Kim is releasing uh, she's known the for contouring. the contouring so the contouring and doing Which the, is the liquid Kim's contouring on the, on the so, lips no, no, the, no, it's the whole cheeks, face, cheeks, the highlights and the low lights, oh, and the no, that. it's the I nose cheeks. and the cheeks. Yeah. For her. So I went, I, I bet you they're one hundred percent working on with each other on like what products you're releasing, shot together, like whatever campaign. you're releasing, and like <sighs> maybe even like creating a they might not be working a monopoly on, it, but Chris on the whole is. fucking Chris beauty is working market. on all of it. <laughs> well, yeah, work <laughs> exactly. mom, work yeah, mom. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'm not, I'm not dissing her. I haven't heard the best. No, I'm really stoked for this. But this is really interesting. Somebody that's worked so hard for your own image. Why do you support the Kardashians when they've because anyone. Anyone, really hard anyone for their that image. says that the Kardashians don't work One hard has, has no hard idea what it, what takes, it takes to exactly. work in Hollywood yeah. and what it takes to be a reality star. These people work very hard every day, morning to night, doing everything, whether it's working out, looking good, photo shoots, product shots, social media. press uh, press junkets, social media. This is a hard job. And it's actually, it's it takes the energy from your heart. It takes your energy from your body. Every time you touch somebody, every time you do a meet and greet, it is a like lot on somebody. People. Well, I mean, yeah. that's why you have a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but what, I, but what I'm love. saying is that it's, it's wait, very... Wait, wait, wait. But it's we're very, about to get to our shade moment. <laughs> yes. Let, let, let's get to our shade moment. Brought yes. to you by Panache Optical Gallery. <laughs> so, uh, custom eyewear. I thought this is actually kind of like a really fantastic shade moment. Was, yeah. But, it's, um, so, it's, it's brilliant. So I don't know if you're aware, but Taylor Swift had removed her entire catalog from like online uh, streaming, like Spotify and all those other yes. networks oh, a couple uh -huh. of years ago. Yeah, yeah. That's a so, picture that we're showing. Oh, uh, yeah. And so uh, Katy Perry decided. Because she said artists deserved more. And yeah. then let's look at what made her come back. Yeah, this is what made her come back. So uh, Katy Perry, the night that she releases Witness, uh, Taylor Swift drops her entire catalog back onto Spotify. Shady. But Damn. <laughs> they, they have like I a mean, little riff great going move. On, right? I mean, amazing move. And honestly, it benefits both of them because the whole drama, uh, like as the much as you should. The whole thing about stealing really the does. dancers yeah, from each other. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, that all yeah. started like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and um, uh, uh, well, uh, Embarrassingly enough, and I don't know how sincere it is or what what's going on, but Katy Perry did like a public apology after that. Did Tried you see to. she redid Tried the lyrics to. to Swiss Swish? Did she? She performed yes. Swiss Swish and she she changed the lyrics. Who did? Let's play the Katie. next picture because this is Katie during her sad interview. Yeah, well, she, well Katie, <gasps> Katie, Katie said uh, during this interview that she, she broke down and the reason why she cut her hair is that she didn't want to be Katie. Like she doesn't want to even look like Katy Perry because you know, that's not her. But there's a whole video that shows every interview that she's done damning Britney Spears for shaving her head, saying, well, there, oh, I yeah, guess I, I have I too much see, attention did, and whatever. Oh, no, I, I did see that video. It was a, like a kind of like a, a not montage, I guess, of like dif different videos of her saying, oh, you, um, I cut my hair. She said, wait till I shave it. So I'm waiting for that for a public breakdown. It did kind of like mm. do call to Britney yep. a few times on that, which is what made um, you infuriate know, a lot of people. But you could have been in defense. You shouldn't make fun of. You shouldn't. You shouldn't uh, make light of mental illness. But yeah. at the same time, she also didn't shave her head in the same way that that situation. No, but she happened. is saying that she cut her hair for a specific reason. Where you know, I bet she'll go back and she'll re re have regretted those statements because she is going through her own sort of public. Uh, identity sad. crisis She's right yeah. now. Identity crisis. That's a perfect way to put it. Yeah. I think. I think that. I think that some people go through a breakdown and do that sort of thing, and some people go through a reawakening and do that. You and know, I still think that she's not. Being I don't somebody, think she's reawakening. I think she's breaking well, down. I just wanted to add that being somebody that's in the in the public eye in the spotlight, it's always it's hard. Who because, has great hair? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because we Literally, all go this through. Is like, we commercial. all go through this shit. Everybody has breakdowns. Everybody says shit that they shouldn't have said. Things they want to take back. Unfortunately, when you're in the public eye, you get scrutinized and judged. And everything's and documented. Exactly. So I'm a very forgiving person because of that. Because I know what it's like. Not that I've ever had it done to me, but I know what it's like. And I don't know what the fuck she's going through or what the hell's going through her but mind. But here's the thing. I think she also got pre... 
uh, information that her album was not going to do well, and it's not doing well right. at all. Right. So she's going to play on our. But does that give you? Does that make you respect her or judge her more? It or makes, neither. It makes never. me curious, I guess. I just Because it makes me respect her more because, she, you know what, she's she's held back She's these only feelings. saying this because her album is shit. But do you, not, that, do that you believe she's... that she doesn't feel it? Well, I don't care. Like, she put out this album. It's shit. Stand behind it. Like, Lady because, Gaga. Because Nobody to me, Lady uh, Gaga because to like me standing behind it. She because just promoted to me, it's... it all weekend. Yeah. You know, she just did this whole live to streaming. Me, she, is, she is standing behind it, you know? Weekend. But can I say that what you just For said. For 96 about, hours straight. What, let, me, let me adjust what you just said. What you, you said about, you know, own it and say it. That takes big, big balls. And now a lot of people in the public eye do not do that. Yeah, but you know what? There was it another takes a lot. There was another thing that, that Stephen, are you going to bring that up? The, uh, the when Katie was like retracting and saying that she was sorry. To, That's what about, I just said. That's what I said. That she, she uh, uh, apologized. Like to yeah. me, I'm like, buck up. Right. If you're gonna if you're gonna write a full song and you're gonna have this whole campaign and this is the spearhead of your album, like don't say, oh, I'm sorry. Like you got Nicki Minaj on your track. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> right. <laughs> well, like, no, your but, fears. But you, you know, know what, what I gives me respect in that sense is that is that yes, it all is calculated and. For her to have seen go into this YouTube ninety six hours straight to go into it being like I know I've I've said all this stuff all of a sudden all of a sudden all of a sudden Taylor says all of a sudden Taylor says oh you know what this is what I'm gonna do and then all of a sudden now Katie comes across and says oh I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, that I forgive her now. And become the bigger person. No, no, no. no, no. What she should have said. What she should have said is Taylor. I love when this happens on the show. No, what she should have said was she was doing better than Taylor Swift. But do you think that she would have been conceding? No. I don't think. No, no, no. no I don't think she was doing no. better. I think she's trying to come across as the bigger no. person. But no. because she's no. not doing better. No, what she should have said. It's all what she should have said. It's all calculated. What she should have said is, "Hey, Tyler, Taylor, it's so fucking tired." And Tyler. That, uh, Taylor, that you are so tired <laughs> that, that, that you have to like release it. your old music to compare with my new. Like, just another, like, no, I meant what I said, and I'm not going to take it back because I meant it. You know and, what I mean? And, she did and who better to tell us this? You have said some pretty outlandish things, but you stand by them. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, and even if I don't agree with them now, I agreed with them at that point. And I'm not gonna and I'm not gonna backtrack and make myself look like, oh poor me. Yeah. No. Poor this me is a what drink. I love about the show. <laughs> poor me and a now drink. we're having <laughs> I love how you think. I love no, how she, she actually <laughs> meant pour her a drink. Yeah. Um, we have to get uh Broadway, we just had the Tony Awards, and I'm gonna make one statement. I'm not political on this show. Kevin Spacey was the host of the Tony Awards. He made coming out jokes during his opening session. How funny is that? But do you think that he because I've talked to a couple people. Did they make it? Did he make it knowing why they were funny to people that know more about him? Or Kevin do you think Spacey knows that for the last year we've all said that he needs to come out for he the last year, for the last like fifteen, right? So he knows that that's behind him, <laughs> and his opening. Oh, <laughs> that's behind him. Can I ask you something about that? Since I'm the mother of a gay child, yes. Why? why why is it that he should come out? Why, why is that the... No, but the fact that he made fun of it knows that he... Like, that it's one thing not to we acknowledge know he's gay. it. He knows right. that. We know that he's gay. Right, but do you feel like that he has to because I don't why? think anyone should be forced no, to come out. I think he's mocking but it. But the fact that he's that. now mocking it but okay. still doesn't actually do oh, God, it, God, God, that, it. that's to me yeah, what's, what's interesting. Yeah. I never want to Not force... even distasteful. It's just because it's everyone's own journey. Sure. Nobody should be forced to come exactly. out. But don't mock it. That's what but, I'm saying. But Nobody don't, should be forced to come out. But don't, but don't the wink the at awards. it and then no. kind of step back. Like At that point, at the point that you're acknowledging that everyone knows that we know that you know... Yeah. It's like friends. It's they, not, know yeah, it's friend. they know that we know. It's friends. They know we know. Yeah, it's friends. Plus... That's my thing. Plus, it's the same weekend that many cities are celebrating Pride. It's also the same weekend that's been a year from Orlando right. Pulse. And our administration hasn't acknowledged LGBT. Don't you dare make a joke about coming out of I mean, the closet. That's what I mean. Like, like, no, we're not even being acknowledged by our, our administration. But so. the, way to, so, but, and the he, way to end that was either to actually do that because I feel like what he did was we say... We all know! No, but I we feel like that's know. what he did. I feel like that's what he did. He was like, I'm making fun of it because everyone knows but I'm not going to actually do it. And so it turned into this whole muddled situation, whereas in the way to end that would have been like, hey, by the way, all the jokes I was making are serious. Then and there would have been like an applause. And like, because because we all know that because we 
keep up with well, LGBT culture. He was a culture. bad host anyway. Anyway, I don't think he was a horrible host. I just didn't like that aspect of it. Anyway, anyway. we're going to end the show. Um, we need our Broadway review because you actually saw these shows that were nominated. I got really lucky. I took an amazing trip um, and and got to see a lot of these shows. And that you have a little vodka. You're going to be honest about these shows. Yeah. First show up. Tony. No, <gasps> no, no. That's not the first. Show. Okay, fine. No, don't start with that one. Yeah. Uh, first show, you saw Avon Hansen. Everybody. Avon. Avon. <laughs> Avon Hansen. Well, it's Eva. Eva. Like Mia Leader. <laughs> no, Evan, Han- Evan Hansen. Evan Hansen was incredible. It's it, it just des- like he deserved he oh, deserved show, everything. So. Yeah, <laughs> he deserved everything. Uh, he deserved the award he got. The show deserved the awards they got. Um, it, it was incredible to see him get to do that performance. It's it's especially anyone who thinks that musical theater has to be big, which is a style. Again, it's similar to sure. soap opera. It, it is a style. It is a unique thing that that they should be awarded for doing. He was able to perform a very nuanced, quiet performance in a musical theater setting, which is even harder. It was incredible. Everybody is talking about it. And so when so many people talk about it, I'm like, oh, but truly. And during the broadcast, like he brought it during his live performance. I think it, it also because a lot of times when we watch the Tonys, they do a lot of wide shots because theater is made to see be sure, seen big. in that in mm-hmm. that in that uh, forum. And they did that apron and, thing. Where but but are... but with him, if you notice, they did a lot of super close ups because he was so the, the details intimate. were so minute and yeah, it, he was very intimate in his performance. It was incredible. But they've done a good job that I don't know what the show is about. It's a guy in a cast. I know I should see the show. And this nerd was in. Pitch Perfect. Do you guys remember? Yeah. No, he's, inc- he he's incredible in Pitch Perfect. Yeah. Um, when yeah. he sings, uh, I've got the magic in yeah. me. He's That's yeah. my favorite part of the music in the first one. He's he's so talented. Um, and he's only like 23, 24. Like, it's incredible. Did he write this as well? No, no, he oh. didn't write it. Okay. Um, but he's been it involved like with it. It seems like it's written for him, it, So it started in D.C. He, okay. he moved it to Off-Broadway, moved it so to Broadway. Vehicle, and he's yeah. he's been involved. And his dad is a big Broadway producer. So, oh. like, there's that aspect of it. But he's been with this project since the very beginning when no one knew it was going to ever become what it was. And he was in Rocky and the Flash, by the way. Oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, I just uh, where's the Meryl cr- Streep's last film. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, so go see it. But I found it as like uh, it's about deep stuff. It's it's it gets really deep. I don't want to spoil it for anyone who doesn't know the then plot. Then don't because yeah, yeah. But I but didn't know it until I heard it, it. It's a surprising musical theater plot. I will tell All you right, that. Next show. Which one you want? Oh. Sure. Oh, come um, on. shut up. So we got to go I see. I need an hour for this. No. Uh, I love Glenn Close. We we bought the tickets because we wanted to see Glenn Close. You bu- People Magazine didn't just give you this? No, I had to buy these things. Um, uh, uh, Glenn Close was incredible in Sunset Boulevard. It's a... a, a what do you mean sh- she's incredible? She was great. I have Glenn to say, Close, I but just, no cigar. I, <laughs> I, I loved Glenn Close. I didn't love Sunset Boulevard, if I can put it that way. Um, and that's just a personal preference. It wasn't a show. I, I, just, Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat is the only uh, d- show that is basically singing the whole way through that I enjoy. Other than that, uh, most of those I get bored with. I have to say, I'm the, the same. The the the, the yeah. production was everyone was great in it. It just wasn't for me. Was this like her last like Betty Davis like? Well, so moment. she played the role. You know I mean? She Raya. played the role. Raya, you and I are just gonna hang out and go to brunch. <laughs> she, she played, the role. Like she, yes. she played the role. I have so um, much to say about this. Like ten years, years ago. ago, she did. Wait. And then, so that's Listen when she was all it. like, so she wasn't eligible for Tonys this year or anything because it was basically a reprisal of that Lepone. same. The reprisal of the same. Oh, you have your whole Patty Lapone thing because she could sing it. Did Glenn you see Close. her on the show this this Sunday? Yes, and, it and she good. wasn't that good. good. You're right. You're allowed to have a bad day. But Glenn Close yeah, has <laughs> head voice, head voice, and chest. Surf. I don't know why I'm fried. Don't. <laughs> no, right? that's how Glenn but Close it's Glenn sings. Close. She should not be in Sunset Boulevard. She she did just fine. I will put it that way. Let's keep well, going. Do you Lynn. feel anything though? Um, no, he said just fine. She was just <laughs> fine. She was fine. 
I was glad I saw her. Would you cast her if you were directing her? You, I feel like you were happy to see her because she's a legend. And yeah. Like, you, you know, it yeah, was good. Still, it's like the way I would feel if I see a, Broadway if I saw should a be Cher different. concert right now. I would be like, you know what? I saw Cher. Am I blown away? Probably not. But like, I saw her. You know, and, the, yeah, and I just saw her in itself. Vegas. But you Broadway know, was shouldn't thing. just I was cast like, I'm movie so glad people. that I saw yeah. this. Broadway should make you feel things. No, she was. She, she acted it well. I the singing boy. part of a musical is obviously very important, but I think had it not been a musical, she would be very high on my list. Had, because it was a musical, she was middle of my list, but she still did a great job. I know she's no That's Patty. That's I heard, I know. So but I also don't love Patty. You're not a fan of Glenn Close? Well, just he just loves it. Patty Lapone. Oh. And anyone no, who's no, ever going to do anything v- that she should different. do, he's not going to like. Glenn Close was brought in to take over for Patty, and she can't sing. So That's you hate Madonna too. As like well. I'm, a, I'm, I'm so about talent and what you can bring to the t- table and what you. Because you're a drag you know queen I mean? that can actually yeah, sing. So exactly. Like, lip sync. You're like lip sync. I could actually That's sing how I, that. Yeah. But but you also have to decide whether or not Patty is the best in everything she does. Ugh. And she's fantastic. That's very true, though. I did enjoy Evita with Madonna. So that's that's a good and thing. And I thought Madonna was fabulous. Didn't get yeah, great so reviews. I liked her but I'm really Because it was about the acting. It wasn't about the singing. <laughs> well, because, Nobody wanted to see Evita well, for the singing. But, uh, to they be a Broadway person, you have to have both. And not that she can't act, but that just was okay. not the right situation for her. You're very right. Glenn Thank Close you. can act. And she can screech Damn, out her notes. drop that mic. <laughs> okay, this is what I'm most interested in. Glass Menagerie, which it is was college fodder. Fucking fantastic. I had only I've done scenes. I when I was Tell in, me more. when I was in uh college, I did scenes from this show and always hated it because I found it so boring. I did scenes too because that is college fodder. You yeah, have to read You do it in college, it's what it is. College menagerie. It. Yep. College um, menagerie. And, no, honestly, that's what people call but, it because you have to do this scene. Whether getting you- to see her do this Sally Field in Glass Menagerie was incredible. And uh, it was done literally. The there was maybe six set. Pe- there was a, a a table, some chairs, a, a recliner, and like three or four other set pieces. But in this, it was literally just done in a blank uh, stage. And she and the entire cast was incredible. I loved every moment of it. There was no intermission, and it was over two and a half hours. And I didn't want to get up ever. It was. Th- this was incredible. I love to hear that. Two and a half hours. Yeah, and it yeah, was worth it. Yeah, but it's it. the Glass Menagerie. I know. I love that play. And it was done so different. College, yep. you, That's you so funny. That was my in name in prison. Heartbeat. You look too young. <laughs> oh, for a what was your name in prison? Glass Menagerie. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Glass Menagerie. I'm sorry, you added a, a There you a go. <laughs> Okay, finally. It was all in context. <laughs> context? <laughs> yeah. Context. Context. Yeah. context. Yeah. Context. As I said, context. <laughs> finally, uh, I want your review because I have my own comments and from the Tony Awards, uh, your review of Hello, Dolly. Um, so my problem with Hello, Dolly is that my main memory of it is the movie. And I, after seeing the... Do you guys know that Gene Kelly directed this movie? And I did it was his not last know that. Directing, oh. And he directed it in Converse every damn day. Good and, for him. And he worked with... Random Barbara information, y'all. Yeah, mm-hmm. for everyday life. I get lots of that. Lori Beth Dinberg over there. I <laughs> uh, love all yep. that. <laughs> um, uh, no, so, Hello, Dolly, I had to remember after I saw it that the movie is what I most remember. The movie cut about out about half the songs. The movie is and not the show. And uh, uh, Barbara Streisand was 30, maybe, when she played Dolly Levi. And the character is supposed to be an older woman. Uh, obviously, but there's much older than 30. The energy level of someone who could step into that role is very different. And, and I had to remember that because I love the movie so much. And seeing the show, the show has a completely different pro- plot line at certain points. And uh, the show is great, but if you're going in imagining that it's going to be the movie, it's not what you wanted. Bette Midler was was the role, uh, but I have to say, at certain times, she would get applause, three minutes of applause for lifting her arm. And by the end of the show, I was a little over that aspect of it. Mm. That being said, she was fantastic. I don't know whether or not I would have voted for her to get the Tony, she deserved to be nominated. I love um, to hear you say that because. How do you feel about um, Dolly Parton doing 
doing Hello Dolly. Yeah, I would. I would. Over. Yeah, I. I want to go back and see that. Um, I would also love to see Barbara Streisand try and not try and do it, but like do it again. She's trying to do Gypsy. So well, but I would love her to see that. I would love to Latina? see Dolly. Dolly's a fantastic How show. About Hola, Dolly. Well, there's been <laughs> share the musical. There's all, they're working on. They, she's know, doing it. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, and yeah, Reba yeah. McIntyre has a musical coming out. It's fantastic. Britney Spears might have one. I mean, I. Die. <laughs> oh my God. Starring Lair Chair. Oh my God. I read the best Britney. <laughs> What's up, Patrick? She did Britney for my birthday once. Like I, can, I can sing out of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's God, about that. that yeah. awesome. <laughs> but still, so seeing Bette Midler on stage, it's. She was fantastic, but I would have. I, I kind of wish I'd just seen a Bette Midler concert and then seen Hello Dolly. She was great in it, or actually, no. I wish I had just watched the movie of Hello Dolly at home and then seen a Batman the concert. She was great at what she was doing. It just reminded me how great the movie was and how much the the, the play was not exactly that. I will say there is a supporting actress in it who deserved a supporting actress t- uh, Tony the nomination. Through my hair, a uh, 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 B.D. Felstein, and she ple- uh, plays uh, the younger uh, supporting female role. I can't remember her name right now, but she was so incredible. And if she's not a, a big star within five years, I will pay you all that are listening five dollars each. Uh, but she's saying ribbons through my hair. Sure. Yes. Also, a standout <laughs> from the Tony Awards was uh, the new Miss Saigon cast. Fantastic! <gasps> I actually have a friend. In, I have a friend in from college. Do you have any Miss Saigon? I did I Leia Salonga's PR for five years. Ooh. Shut up, because. She has an amazing voice and no passion uh, on stage. Who, Leia? Yeah. I mean, yeah, she was a child star. She's like the child star of the Philippines. But like that's that's my that's my like but the new, recollection the new with Miss Agon. She sang with such passion. I was floored. <sighs> All right, you guys, can you imagine the show is already done? It's more than uh, done. Why? What? Ava Tamargo. So oh my fun. god, it was so fun. Where I can stay. our fans <laughs> yes. Where can our fans find you? They can find me, uh, you mean on social media? Yes. Because uh, <laughs> she's like, I'm not giving my address. <laughs> right. You can find me on the <laughs> corner. They can find right me on the corner. I'm ready to Fridays. come on with you and like, just like cuddle and maybe have a few tequilas. Uh, on Instagram, on, on Facebook, obviously, and uh, on Twitter. I'm, I mean, on Instagram, I have a name, Evolution, which is my shirt. Ooh. Oh, oh so wow. Evolution. So it's Eva, E-V-A-L-U-T-I-O-N, yeah. one, one, Rest one, one. Best. Drop the stories. See, Ooh, drop Nancy the stories. I have that. a whole thing, a whole YouTube channel about uh, how to be present, how to own your shit, how to be who you are, mm-hmm. how to not pretend, how to not. I think it's a collab right here. Yep. It's God. That's why I keep <laughs> saying. Please. I know. Please. So um, I really resonate with a lot of what she's saying, and you're so young, and I'm so glad she's got it going on now because it took me 50 plus years to figure it out. Um, so yeah, can you imagine so, yeah. 50 plus years? Yeah, because I would never. It's a Latin jeans, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so jealous. Mexicana, right here. I just got Botox here. I'm like, I, I gotta fix this. I know. <laughs> I, I knew she had some Latin blood because she's when whenever she said anything in Spanish, she pronounced it really well. But she's so. had a lot in her. So. Oh. Oh. Ah. <laughs> and you said you just know me. <laughs> Ray Latre, where can fans find you? Everywhere. Um, Ray Latre everywhere. I'm pretty much the only Raya drag queen, except for this fat one that uses my Instagram hashtag. Plus size. But. Uh, big girls need love, I'll too. say fat because she used my uh, hashtag. No, yeah, the look I just got. No. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Uh, but totally find me anywhere and uh, hopefully be working with Miss Thing soon. Yes. I am Steven Zeller's roommate. Um, anywhere you look, you'll find me. <laughs> you'll come back as a guest co-host, yes? Yes, God, and I'm going to grab that Amsterdam vodka and spunk and hit the dough. <laughs> <laughs> whoop, whoop. Patrick <laughs> Gomez. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, obviously, like he said, uh, Pat, uh, People Magazine, uh, people.com, uh, Patrick Gomez, LA as in Los Angeles on Instagram and Twitter. And yeah, I will, I will message back sometimes, unless you're mean. You don't promote our show, but okay. Uh, God, every time. <laughs> <laughs> I on Facebook I'm Stephen Ever Daler on uh, Twitter Stephen Daler and then on Instagram the only Stephen which is the easiest one to remember because I'm the only one you should remember. Yeah, <laughs> I, love it. I love it. You guys, we have so much fun. Thank you so much to Tony Sweet uh, with yes. UBN. Uh, coming up at the show, we have Marianne from Gilligan's Island. She's still alive. And we have Peter Page from Queer as Folk. Uh, you guys, that's this supposed to be coming been... back. Isn't which it? one is Peter Page? Uh, he's Emmett. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, oh my god, I loved him. He was you like, my, come cast comics for that please. Episode? I like grew up and I was watching. And I was like, I, I wish I could be that gay, and I did. <laughs> I did it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> uh, I love that. Well, so I got it. <laughs> <laughs> a big thank you to my mom. Thank you for everybody. Mama. Uh, Sasa. Sasa. See you ciao, next ciao. Tuesday. On the Rocks Radio. <laughs> this has been On the Rocks with Alexander. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network. Find me on Facebook on On the Rocks Radio Show. Tweet me or Instagram me at On the Rocks On Air. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs>